start in uh, two minutes. Good morning, everyone. The second uh, meeting of the Committee on Labor, Employment, Social Welfare, Migrant Workers of the Commission on Appointments in the first regular session of the 19th Congress is hereby called to order. May we request the Madam our Committee Secretary to please uh, call the roll. The Honorable Officers and Members of the Committee on Labor, Employment, Social Welfare, and Migrant Workers, Vice Chairperson, Senator Maria Lourdes Nancy S. Binay, Members, Representative Ferginel G. Biron, MD, Senator Francis Chis G. Escudero, Senator Jingoy Ejercito Estrada, Representative Albert S. Garcia, Senator Christopher Bong Go, Senator, Senator Risa Ontiveros, Senator Lauren Legarda, Representative Oscar Oka G. Malapitan, Senator Amy R. Marcos, Senator Grace Poe, Representative Lani Mercado Revilla, Representative Jordine Jesus M. Romualdo, Representative Manuel T. Sagarbaria, Senator Francis Tol N. Tolentino, yes, Senator Cynthia A. Villar, ex officio yes, members. Present. 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 Online. Ex officio members, Vice Chairperson Representative Ramon N. Guico Jr., Majority Floor Leader Representative Luis Raymond L. Ray F. Villaferte Jr., Present. Assistant Majority Floor Leader Senator Joseph Victor G. Ejercito, Assistant Majority Floor Leader Representative Rodante D. Marcoleta, Minority Floor Leader Senator Alan Peter Compañero S. Cayetano, Assistant Minority Floor Leader, Representative Jose Gay G. Padiernos. Assistant Minority Floor Leader, Representative Johnny T. Pimentel. The chairperson is present. Thank you, Madam Secretary. With 11 members present in person, including the chair and two members uh, present online, with a total of 13 members present, the existence of a quorum is uh, hereby uh, declared. We now proceed to the Item number three, approval of the minutes of the previous meeting, Honorable uh, Majority Leader. Mr. Chair, I move that we dispense with uh, with the reading of the minutes of the previous meetings held on September 14 and 20, 2022, and consider the same as approved. Is there any objection? The Chair hears none. The reading of the minutes of the previous meetings held in on September 14 and 20, 2022 is dispensed with the same are considered approved. Good morning, esteemed members of the committee, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Your Committee on Labor, Employment, Social Welfare, and Migrant Workers is tasked to deliberate on the ad interim appointment of Secretary Erwin 
Shiba Tulfo as Secretary of the Department of Social Welfare and Development. May we now hear the, meeting, the Commission Secretary's report on the jurisdictional requirements and other pertinent information relative to the ad interim appointment under consideration in compliance with the new rules of the Commission and the rules of the Standing Committees. Madam Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Your Honors. The ad interim appointment of Secretary Erwin Teshiba Tufo as Secretary of the Department of Social Welfare and Development dated September 29, 2022, was received by the Commission on October 6, 2022, and was referred by the CAIR Chairman Juan Miguel Mix F. Zubiri on the same date to the Committee on Labor, Employment, Social Welfare, and Migrant Workers for its appropriate action pursuant to Section 16, Chapter 5 of the New Rules of the Commission. The ad interim appointment under consideration was published on July 28 and 29, 2022 in two newspapers of general circulation and broadcast over PTB4 pursuant to Section 2, Article 2 of the Rules of the Standing Committees. The appointee has complied with the submission of the mandatory documentary requirements of September 22, 2022, as provided in Section 24, Chapter 6 of the New Rules of the Commission. On September 29, 2022, your Secretariat received a sworn affidavit of opposition from Attorney Frumencio E. Pulgar against the ad interim appointment of Secretary Tulfo. The appointee was provided with a copy of the opposition, and on November 21, 2022, the Commission was in receipt of the appointee's reply to the said opposition. Likewise, members of this committee were electronically furnished copies of the said sworn opposition as well as copies of Secretary Tulfo's reply thereto. The Commission Secretariat has duly notified the oppositor of today's committee hearing meeting, and on November 15, 2022, your Secretariat received a communication from Attorney Pulgar requesting your honors that he be allowed to attend online in the proceedings of this committee for reasons of his advanced age and comorbidity condition. That is all, Mr. Chairman, your honors. Thank you, uh, Madam Secretary. The Chair would like to acknowledge the presence of Senator J.V. Arsito. We now proceed to item 6. Uh, deliberation on the ad interim appointment of Secretary Irwin Tulfo. May we request the Secretary to please administer the oath to Secretary Tulfo. Secretary Tulfo, please stand and raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the whole truth and nothing but the truth in this proceeding? So help you God. I do. Mr. Chair, the appointee is now under oath. Thank you. The Committee will now deliberate on the ad interim appointment of Secretary Erwin Tulfa, Secretary of the Department of Social Welfare and Development. May we now call on the appointee to please uh, take the seat in front. And uh, Mr. Secretary, we now please give your opening statement. Thank you, uh, Mr. Vice Chair. Anyway, um, good morning to every everyone, uh, to the members, to all the members of the Commission on Appointments. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege to appear before the Commission on Appointments today and humbly submit myself to the process of confirmation on my appointment as Secretary of the Social Welfare and Development. As a journalist for more than two decades, I took notice of the issues and predicaments of our fellow Filipinos who are poor, vulnerable, and marginalized. I listened to their plight in a desire to address their needs. And in the capacity I then held, I have always been guided by our mission to comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. And that is my why. Discovering my why reinvigorated my passion to serve those less in life, eradicate poverty and reduce inequalities through sustainable development. I believe the valuable lessons I wield from decades of immersion with the poor, deprived, and oppressed sectors of our society will guide me in fulfilling the gigantic task of leading the Department of Social Welfare and Development fulfill its vision and mission aligned with its core values of respect for human dignity, integrity, and service excellence. Certainly, this journey will not be easy. Some might even cast doubt and discredit us. 
But no amount of distractions will stop us from attaining this administration's aspiration of reducing poverty incidents to a single digit percentage by 2025. To achieve that, we will continue to learn from the wisdom of our predecessors. We will listen to the cries of our clients and be inspired by the stories of success of our beneficiaries in order to render better services and yield outstanding results. I am determined to pursue the Marcus administration's thrust for digitalization with the approval of the roadmap of interventions to achieve the mission for digital delivery of social protection. This, as we mainstream social protection in the Comprehensive Development Plan and Annual Investment Plan of local government units as we gear towards the devolution of social welfare services. It is my desire to effect fundamental changes in the lives of the poor, vulnerable and marginalized towards this end. I guarantee to accord them the services they deserve so they could see hope and not despair. We do this while fortifying transparent, accountable, honest and compassionate public service. With that, the esteemed members of the Commission appointments, your honors, I humbly stand before you this morning requesting for your favorable confirmation of my appointment as Secretary of the Department of Social Welfare and Development. I guarantee that I will faithfully discharge my duties and obligations with the best of my abilities earned from years of serving the public from different capacities, especially from the broadcast mass media. Finally, let me state that I am grateful that I am given the chance to work with you and all the angels in red vest in our pursuit for inclusive and sustainable development together. Let us champion the rights and welfare of the poor and accord them efficient, effective, economical, and ethical public service. Thank you, your honors, and good morning. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. The appointee is now ready to respond to any comments, uh, questions from Mr. the Chair. Member. Yes, uh, Majority Leader. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank and congratulate the Secretary for your quick action uh, during your baptism of fire, the first uh, typhoon that hit the country, Paeng. Uh, first, thank you for quickly acting in supporting uh, uh, Bicolanos and our country. Maraming salamat, Secretary. Uh, we congratulate your team and your family under your leadership. My question basically, uh, Secretary, is the conditional cash transfer program or the four piece was started 2007 in a pilot and uh, was budgeted in 2008. 15 years after uh, the four piece program was started and almost a trillion pesos was already spent. Uh, tanong ko po, Secretary, do you think the 4P program uh, nakatulong po sa pagbaba ng poverty incidence ng ating bansa? Mr. Secretary. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, it has, and it will. Siguro lang po, sir, kailangan lang po natin that Congress will revisit the law. Kailangan lang po ng adjustments. Because after so many years, Eh, ganun pa rin po yung system. Though, may mga nag-graduate po. The purpose of 4P, sir, ay yung mga poor families, mapaaral yung kanilang mga anak, education, and then ika nga, ma-check ma yung kanilang mga health and needs of the children. Nangyayari naman po yung may mga nag-graduate, napapag-graduate, meron po kaming mga success stories ng mga beneficiaries. Pero we need to revisit kasi yung iba po na abuse, such as um, ginagamit po ng pangsugal, yung iba po ay eh, ina-advance na, sinasanla yung kanilang cash card. So, hindi na po talaga nagagasta minsan para sa mga anak. So, so what I'm asking, sir, is kung pwedeng reviewin po ng Congress, ng Senate, itong batas na ito para maging full ika nga, para talagang mapupunta po yung benepisyo sa mga bata, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your answer. Um, I think uh, the law is there and I think under your leadership, siguro you can take the initiative uh, 
na ayusin po yung uh, sistema kasi while the money is there uh, tama po kayo yung iba po ay hindi na pupunta sa dapat no but ang ating mga kababayan po ngayon ay nakikinig and uh, palagi nilang tinatanong sa akin sa uh, aming probinsya sa barangay sa aking pagbisita uh, yung problema po ng lista ng 4P kasi po uh, siguro alam niyo na rin po ito Uh, marami po ang beneficiary ng 4P noon, uh, nakakatanggap ngayon, na nag-graduate na po sila. Dati po ay beneficiary sila dahil uh, sama po sila sa qualification na mahirap. At ang iba naman po ay umasenso na and yet tumatanggap pa po sila. And marami naman po ang mahihirap na hindi kasama sa lista kasi kagaya sa aming probinsya, ang reklamo po nila yung kapitbahay po nila na sementado po ang bahay, may sasakyan, nakakatanggap ng 4P, at sila po makikita naman po tarpulin ang bubong sa, sa lupa, wala sa 4P. Uh, yan lang po ang uh, gusto ko pong mabigyan nyo ng atensyon at kung pwede pong sagutin nyo yung katanungan ko po, ano po ang ginagawa po nyo under your leadership? Una, para maayos yung lista, makorek, yung mga hindi na deserving, nakagraduate na ay sana mapalitan na ng mga deserving. At uh, pangalawa, yung mga deserving from the start of the program na hanggang ngayon po ay hindi pa nakakatanggap. Kasi yan po ang pinapakinggan na ating mga kababayan ngayon na palagay ko naman under your leadership ay mabibigyan nyo po ng atensyon. Mr. Chair, um, when I took uh, over, uh, meron pong tinatawag na listahan ng three. Ito po yung uh, survey na ginagawa po ng DSWD every three years. To check on the beneficiaries at yung mga kababayan natin na may hirap kung pwedeng ipasok po sa four Ps. Uh, it identified 1.3 million Filipinos da who are non-poor, na member po ng four Ps. So, dapat po tatanggalin ho yung 1.3 na yung ipapalitan natin ng bago. Unfortunately, that survey was done in 2019 before the pandemic. So, hindi na po siya ikang uh, correct dahil marami pong naghirap ng pandemic. So, what I did, sir, was uh, uh, instructed my people with the listahan na uh, program and uh, or uh, NHTO pala and uh, four piece to conduct another round of survey. And true enough, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair, um, we found out na dun po sa 1.3, 700,000 ang kailangan pong manatili doon sa four piece. Only 500 plus ang pwede pong i-graduate, ang pwede pong palitan na ng mga bagong miyembro. So yun ang ginagawa namin and hopefully, sir, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Your Honor, by uh, January this year, we will have a, a list of new members of the four piece, around 500,000 of them. And this will be distributed to the different sectors of our society from uh, disabled, uh, uh, solo parents, farmers and fisher folks. Don't we not need to distribute your 500,000, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Secretary, magkano pa po ba ang budget ng 4P uh, under sa 2022 GAA? Nasa 110 uh, million plus, uh, billion plus po, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. And magkano po yung sasubmit sa NEP? I think it's 115 or something? Nag-increase po? Uh, exactly, yes, uh, Your Honor. Mr. Chair. So you're one of the lucky departments na nadagdagan ng budget, no? Because most of the departments, in terms of four people, ano, nadagdagan po ang four people, which is good news to our people, no? But uh, the fact that nadagdagan po yung budget from 2020 to around 107.6, ngayon 115.6 na, which is like almost 8% increase, uh, does it mean na nagdagdagan pa po ba ang uh, mahihirap na magiging beneficiary? Ang 4P? Hindi po, sir, because as a law, it only says like 4.4 million. Well, right now, we're catering to about 4.2 uh, million uh, poor families, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Uh, so, sec Secretary, uh, so you're saying nadagdagan ng budget, pero hindi po nadagdagan po ang uh, beneficiary po? 
Uh, yung iba po kasi, um, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair, ginagamit po namin sa operational expenses po ng, uh, to check on uh, yung mga members po ng 4Ps. That's where it goes, uh, operational expenses. And then at the same time, yung mga idadagdag po natin, yung mga biglang suddenly nawawala, hinahanap po natin yan. Because uh, marami po sa kanila, suddenly, hindi po namin malaman, uh, under the law, they have to tell us, inform us where they're going. So, ang nangyayari po, minsan, nawawala po sila bigla without informing us. So, nagkakaproblema, nagre-report po sila na hindi nila natatanggap yung kanilang uh, beneficyo. Eh, gayon pa man, kasi they did not inform us, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. So, S Secretary, um, yung dagdag po na 7 billion will go po for operational expense, not for beneficiaries po? Uh, beneficiaries pa rin po, kasi we have to uh, go up to about 4.4 .4, uh, million, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Uh, sana po, uh, ang mga local government naman po ay willing makipagtulungan po sa inyo na para maayos po yung lista. Uh, sana po ay... Uh, mas maging uh, cooperative kayo, supportive sa mga LGUs po na willing po mag-support. Like in our province po, in Camarini Sur, uh, we spent, uh, the, the government spent uh, their own money to have a survey po kung sino po yung mahirap and all. And uh, we will share that with you. Kasi yan talaga hinaing sa aming provincial all over the country po eh, na nakikita po nila na may monthly benefit po ang uh, ibang kasakapit bahay nila pero sila na mas mahirap uh, uh, hindi nakakatanggap at sana talaga yan talaga ang uh, mabigyan nyo ng atensyon no? uh, I would just like to reiterate and pangalawa pong concern po na sana maayos po nyo under your leadership niraise ko na po to during the last uh, yung predecessor nyo and unfortunately hindi talaga fully na na solve no? ang ating Pangulong uh, Bongbong nagsabi that but dapat uh, to support and promote digitalization, especially in government transactions. We fully support it. Ako nga, as early as 2013, nag-file na ako ng 16, nag-file na ako ng bill for e-government because I believe less human intervention, less corruption. So I'm, I'm sure nakareceive na rin kayo ng mga complaints regarding this, especially yung overpricing ng uh, digital uh, payments. Ang tanong ko lang po, Kasi sa marami naman po ang ating kababayan na island town, island province, na they have to spend four, five hundred pesos uh, from their barangay, pupunta sila sa syudad na may ATM at may payout. Samantalang ang nakukuha lang nila, magkano ba ang payout? Minsan, uh, less than 1,000 ba? Uh, what I'm saying is they're spending uh, more than half just to get the money uh, to benefit from the CCT. Ang tanong ko po, ano pa po ang ginagawa nyo to fully digitalize or at least majority digital na po ang transfer ng 4P sa ating mga kababayan? Kasi po, di ba, maliit na nga yung nakukuha and they have to spend food, transport. At yung iba po, sir, uh, mat masyado ng mahina, matatanda, hindi na makabiyahe. So, kailangan may magsama pa sa kanila para makabiyahe, dagdag pamasahe po yun. So, ano po ang... Uh, uh, under your leadership po ang uh, ginagawa po natin para mapabilis, maayos po ang uh, distribution po ng uh, four piece. Sir, uh, there was a matching order from uh, the president na going digital po, digitalize, particularly the Department of Social Welfare and Development because of the ayudas nga, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Um, and we are doing that. As a matter of fact, there's a company, uh, Mr. Chair, who's volunteering to do digital digitalize DSWD for free. Unfortunately, there are some laws and policies under the Department of Budget and Management that uh, kailangan pa pong e-bidding. So medyo nawawala na po ng gana yung company ho na yun na volunteering to digitalize the DSWD. As a matter of fact, the promise when I came in last July 1, kaya nila i-digitalize yung AX pa lamang, sir, in about 90 days. Unfortunately, and I saw the policy of uh, the Department of Budget and Management na kailangan pong i-bidding. E yun ang doon ho tumatagal, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. So, hindi ho ngayon. Nag-aantay po kami ngayon ng feedback mula sa DBM. Pero uh, a couple of weeks ago, I already instructed my finance uh, undersecretary to check with COA kung pwede po natin i-bypass namin, i-bypass yung policy na yun. Kasi it's just a policy actually from DBM. Kasi free naman ho. Uh, no cash out from the government, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. So uh, that's what we're doing. We're waiting po 
my, the reply of uh, COA and at the same time the DBM, uh, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, just let us know how we can help. No, but for example, in our province, uh, set, uh, salamat na bisita mo kami. Meron kami tinatawag na provincial ID na cash card with land bank. Kasi ang plano po namin ng mga AX, ang mga medical burial at scholarship papadaanin na po doon. And I think hindi na kailangan i-bidding yun if DSWD partners with the LGU comes or uh, pati sa 4 people. Uh, ang second step po namin uh, after uh, issuing a provincial ID with cash card na digital ay to expand also yung POS system sa barangay na nakaka-withdraw na sila at no cost to the government. So we're volunteering to if you can partner with us and do that trial, hindi na kailangan po i-bidding yan. No? So, um, marami pa akong tanong, pero siguro I will let other, uh, some of our colleagues also uh, do the questioning. No, But, uh, Sec, I fully support you for the simple fact that dati nakikita lang kita sa TV at radyo, but I experienced firsthand na nung bagyo talaga, ay nag-action ka pag nagte-text kami sumasagot ka so with that uh, maraming salamat and uh, i believe in your leadership maraming salamat po thank you your honor thank you very much majority leader the chair would like to recognize the presence of uh, representative gp pajernos next to us question is uh, member jerry pentel thank you mr chair uh, Secretary, I was looking over uh, the your profile because each nominee, um, for each nominee, the co the uh, secretary gives us profiles so that we could base also our questions there. I was really amused to see some of the facts now, especially with your personal life. And I would like to read: Subject official declared that he has ten children from several women. Um, I suppose you had a very colorful love life uh, secretary. And not, uh, there were four women who are the mothers of your uh, children. Are you still in good terms with the mothers? Um, we separated, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, uh, we're in good terms. Uh, we're in talking terms and including all my children. Uh, some of them are in the United States and uh, some are here, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Secretary, considering that in your line of work, uh, the moment you're the secretary of DCWD, and uh, I suppose you'll be meeting a lot of women in your line of work, hindi po ba magiging sagabal sa trabaho mo yun na marami kang makikilalang babae? It happened, Mr. Uh, Chair, Your Honor, when I was uh, younger, when I was in the media. And uh, as you grow old, you notice that uh, you start to look uh, differently in life, your perspective, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. When we, we are young, sir, uh, we make mistakes. Uh, I mean, uh, but I'm not ashamed uh, to, to say that I made mistakes. And from that mistake, you have to make corrections and adjust. And, uh, and you have to bring it all the way until uh, you grow old, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Also, Secretary, uh, Mr. Chair, I also um, read that uh, the Secretary, the good Secretary, was also in the States, and he worked there for several years. Secretary Correct, po ba? Uh, that's true. Uh, 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 Secretary? I, uh, first, I applied to uh, uh, grocery stores. And then after that, po, I uh, worked with the Department of Defense, U.S. Department of Defense, Mr. Uh, Chair, Your Honor. And then after that, you embarked on your uh, professional career as a TV host, hindi po ba? Oh, po, I came back home, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Anyway, Mr. Chair, I know this is not related to his work, but I was just curious. Uh, anyway, I manifest my full support to the Secretary. Uh, although this is his first appointment as a... Uh, a government uh, official, but I know very well that uh, since he embarked on his program, he has been uh, working for the, the uh, several constituents in our country, and I believe that he will be an asset to the government considering his experience in public serving. I give my 100% support to the Secretary, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Representative Pimentel. Next question is uh, 
Congressman Romualdo, then uh, Congressman Chiquiting, and Senator Tiveros. Congressman J.J. Romualdo. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Honorable colleagues, good morning. Secretary uh, Tulfo, good morning, sir. Uh, ang mga yung sinabi ni Majority Floor Leader, nakikita lang kita sa TV at radio. First time na nandito. But there was one thing na one of your programs when I was governor in the province, uh, yung Maog po kayo sa amin, tinanong mo kung what happened to the province at saka ang nagustuhan ko doon, kung may problema ka, anong kulang, tawagan mo lang ako, uh, matulungan ko yung probinsya ng Kamigin kung hindi mo nakalimutan yon Second, your kuya, Mon, doon ho naghunting sa Kamigin at saka zero sa palagi sa lahat ng hinanting niya. But uh, there's one thing I want to ask from the Secretary. Tungkol po sa senior citizen. Eh, when I was governor, then I uh, became mayor one turn and back as governor. Uh, bago nagbalik sa Congress. Usually, kami ang local uh, politicians, kami yung biniblame pag hindi nasali yung senior citizen sa listahan. Sabi namin, Yung DSWD kasi, mayroong enumerators that go to our place. Ang nangyari po, Secretary, minsan, yung the enumerators, lalo na po malayo na konti ng barangay. Although all the roads in Kamigin are concrete, pas saan ka pupunta. Pero minsan, tamad punta. Even kung doon kukuha ng enumerator sa Kamigin. Pag nag ano, nagtatanong na lang ng tao kung may kasalubong, especially maraming aso, Sabihin na, Manong, sila na lang nakatao diyan? Ilang tao na lang diyan? Yes, mga sampo siguro, dose. So, may senior ba? So, minsan, hindi talaga tumama na dapat qualified. The same way with for peace. Especially, I'm so thankful, especially now, ng DSWD, talagang chinicheck niya. Kasi there's a barangay in Kamigin. Na, pero nung pag mayroon yung enumerators, Meron pupunta, whatever. Talagang nag-iba yung bahay. Nawawala yung TV, nawawala yung plato. Yung ganun. Sabi ko, i-check nyo uli. Ganun. Eh, pwede mo ba na mapagsabihan nyo, especially dun sa on the ground level, na every time na matatapos yung 40s or senior citizen na mamatay na po, na kailangan ma-enumerate uli. Although we, the LGOs, pag na nag-courtesy call po sa amin, sinasamahan talaga ng tao namin na makikita para hindi sayang yung pera. And uh, marami hong qualified din na senior citizen. Sabi namin, we're not the ones responsible for that. Maybe we can recommend, but this is only the budget for each. Uh, no. Kasi uh, palagi yung sinasabi, especially pag malapit na yung eleksyon, sabi Hindi kami nasali kasi pinupolitika ho ni mayor, ni governor. Ganun. But uh, gusto ko lang mag-clarify yun. Na I know for a fact na you coordinated with us but the listings, you asked for the listings and kayo nag kayo pumipili doon na ito yung qualified o hindi qualified. Uh, yun po, Secretary. I will look into, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, I will look into that immediately. And then uh, we will uh, coordinate uh, properly uh, this time with the uh, local government unit, sir. Sa pa ho kasi ang uh, problem ho natin dyan, uh, yung uh, Office of uh, Senior Citizen Affairs po namin ay mahihiwalay na po sa DSWD. Uh, meron ho tayo dyan yung sa uh, Senior Citizens uh, Office namin under po sa amin na ngayon po ay nagka-transition po uh, yung mga funding po bibigay na ho namin next year pero for now kami po mga nag-hire ng tao we're helping them uh, at the present moment uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair Thank you, Secretary Magkano budget for sa senior citizens? Doon po sa social uh, pension fund uh, sir was like uh, 25 billion uh, we're asking po sana to uh, raise it to 50 billion kasi po uh, may batas po na naipasa dati po ay eh, 500 pesos po sila every month ngayon po ay eh, 1,000 na eh, yung binigay po na 25 billion sir pang 500 uh, pang 500 pesos lang po ay eh, monthly so kulang pa po 
uh, hinahabol ho namin yung another 25 sana kung mabigyan tayo, madagdagan po ng plenary. Gawin po nga uh, 50 billion po yung uh, budget para po sa senior citizens uh, social pension fund, sir. We can discuss, Gurjan, with our majority floor leader, especially sa BICAM. Uh, kasi marami nung senior citizen. Opo. Kaya na mo ganun. Tulong talaga. Yung pag na-qualified ka po sa social pension, yung member ng senior citizen, kailangan wala siyang pension na natatanggap. Tama po yun, uh, Your yeah. Honor. Dapat wala po talaga. Hindi kasi hindi naintindihan, Sek. Eh. Alam niyo po, uh, yung, bizaya ba? Yung, sabi ka nga dahil na, Kung pwede naman kami, pero sabi ko may GSIS po kayo, hindi pwede, especially GSIS, any pension na tinatanggap. Pero they cannot understand. We explain, but, uh, pero nag-insist, alam mo na yung mga matanda, mag-insist talaga palagi. Ganun. But uh, yes sir. Marami po tayo, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair, ng mga senior citizens na wala po talaga natatanggap. Either kasi po eh, hindi sila nagtrabaho, mga usually po yung mga uh, uh, homemaker lang, yung mga nasa bahay lang, housewife, na namatay na po yung asawa nila. So wala po silang mga pension, wala silang SSS o GSIS, uh, karamihan ho dyan, mga vendor, karamihan ho, meron, marami din ho dyan na iniwan na talaga ng anak, hindi na po binibigyan, sinusustentuhan. Yun po talaga ang target ng social pension fund po natin, uh, Your Honor. Yung talagang walang-wala pong natatanggap, uh, Your Honor. Eh, doon naman sa funds namin, sa province, tsaka sa congressman, na uh, nag-ano, karambos kami, para tulungan yung mga ganun. Pero, But nag-expect din sila na mayroon from national. Sabi ko, makarating yun. Pero sabi nga nila, paano naman yun, Gob? Pag namatay, nahintayin mo matay. Pag saka na kami makasubstitute, mamamatay na rin kami. Ganun. Kaya gusto ko po rin tingnan yun. The budget for that. Na kailangan makarating. Dami na yung senior citizen. Tsaka marami din na wala hong pension ba. And thank you for looking to that also, Secretary. Keep up the good work. And uh, sabi ko nga, sabi ni Majo namin, si Congressman El Rey, na nakikita ka lang namin sa TV at sa radyo, namin personal. And uh, you take also action right away, pumupunta kayo, wala pong tulog. And keep up the good work. And you have my vote in behalf of the province of Kamigin and later on for your confirmation in the plenary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Romualdo, just a follow-up question on that from the Chair, uh, Mr. Secretary. Uh, probably there's a need to also review the policy of the Department, lest I be remiss of my duty. Uh, for example, in Bacolod, we have about 20,000 senior citizens, and uh, the number of beneficiaries for social pension is only 2,000 plus. In similar cities, uh, highly urbanized cities such as Bacolod, they have more number of uh, beneficiaries from uh, the SWD. So probably an equal distribution of uh, the limited resources of the SWD for social pension qualified uh, beneficiaries, uh, Mr. Secretary. Your Honor, actually, um, eh, malaki po rin kaming, uh, uh, kaya marami pong hindi na isasama because malaki po ang backlog ngayon. And thousands and thousands po of senior citizens natin na are waiting. Tama po yung sinasabi ho ninyo, uh, Your Honor, na makakapasok lang kami dyan pag may mamatay. Pero medyo hindi nga po maganda at tama po yun. Pero that's the only way para makapasok po yung ilang senior citizens natin because of the limited budget, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. So, Uh, for that, eh, ngayon nga ho, problema pa ho natin ngayon yung, uh, uh, because of this new law that, uh, that uh, became into law actually, uh, raising na 500 pesos to 1,000 na po ngayon. Uh, unfortunately, yung nasa budget po namin ngayon for 2023 is pang 500 uh, pesos pa rin monthly. So, yun ang problema natin, pupunoan po natin yung another 500 po. So, we need like around 25 billion more kasi... 25 lang po yung naibigay sa amin, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Sir, in line with yes. your, in addition, uh, one of the principal author po ko ng solo parents uh, law, no? um, may IRR na po kayo, di ba, na, na na-release po? Tapos na po, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. May clarification lang po ako dahil may nabasa po ako sa 
uh, newspaper na sabi niyo na that the LGU should already start distributing. I would like to clarify that the law specifies the budget will be from national government, not LGU. Tama po ba? Hindi po, sir. Actually, yung uh, monthly na ibibigay po para sa mga solo parent will come from the local government okay. unit. Magagaling po sa uh, era po nila, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Uh, ano yan? Uh, is it part of the devolved function? Hindi po. Nasa code po yun. Eh. Sa uh, local government po actually yun. Depende po sa... Actually, nakapeg po siya pag... Uh, First class, uh, second class municipalities or cities, sir, na sa 1,000. Tapos uh, ngayon yung uh, mga third, fifth and sixth class municipalities dapat po ay eh, uh, depende po sa LGU. Kaya nga po may narami po nagre-reklamo ng mga LGU sa atin, Your Honor, Mr. Chair, na hindi po nila kaya yun, uh, Mr. Chair. Ang alam ko kasi, anyway, we will clarify, uh, that should be national government funded, no? Anyway, uh, since may IRR na, siguro... Um, uh, with your leadership, dapat i-clarify yung uh, who are the beneficiaries, dapat mag-issue na ng ID po, di ba po? Uh, Ma-identify na kung sino yung mga yan. Kasi in order to avoid confusion, kasi meron dyan, kakahiwalay lang, solo parent na, no? So, uh, may malino naman sa batas po yung qualification. Siguro under your leadership, ma malinawan at mapabilis na po ang uh, implementation po nito. Salamat po. Okay. We now... Uh, proceed to member Sagarbaria of the Magete. Uh, good morning, everyone. The Chair, uh, Mr. Secretary, uh, you have made mention during your introductory speech and you used the word devolution. So how do you conceptualize, so what do you want to happen? What you wanted to say when you said that we are on the process of the devolution of the Department, DSWD, of which we know you have already resource or personnel practically in all provinces in the country. So I would just like to be clarified your vision on how do you want this to happen? What is the type of devolution that you want to go into? That's one of my first questions, Mr. Chair. Mr. Secretary. Yeah, Mr. Chair, yung devolution kasi uh, may mga programs po kami that has to be uh, turned over uh, to the local government units po. Uh, isa na po dyan uh, yung pong, uh, mga programs namin such as AIX, such as uh, Sustainable Livelihood, yung Kalahi Seeds, uh, yung mga feeding programs po namin. To say, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, yung funding po niyan I I ibibigay po dun sa LGU para the LGU will have full control, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, doon po sa program po na yun at wala na po sa national level. Actually, Mr. Chair, for, for next year, uh, dapat eh, na-devolve na sa LGU yung, mga, yung AX, yung po yung mauna eh. Pero hinold po muna ng executive branch po yun kasi pag-aaralan pa dahil baka magamit daw po sa politika doon po sa local level, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. So, Mr. Secretary, what level do you believe you are into now in your process of devolution in the things that you want to happen in the coming years? So, you, know, so you have made mention you want to bring down to a single digit level the poverty in the country in 2025. Siguro, Your Honor, Mr. Chair, yun po yung uh, una po sa lahat, yung feeding program po namin because we're running that. Uh, we hope uh, we can uh, uh, turn it over to the LGUs na po, hopefully by next year, kasi mas identified po ng LGU yung mga uh, barangay sa kanilang lugar na medyo uh, meron pong uh, malnutrition, kakulangan sa pagkain. Mas alam po ng mga mayors po yun, ng mga governors and barangay. And then another thing siguro sir, yung sustainable livelihood program ng uh, DSWD para ikang mabantayan po ng LGU when when we give out the money or the, the LG will give out the money, nababantayan nila talagang napupunta sa livelihood yung ibibigay na pera po ng uh, pamahalaan. Uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Okay, Mr. Chair, my other question is a parochial concern. In my district and in my province, I usually refer a lot of people to DSWD for assistance. And the feedback I get from my constituency is that sometimes it takes them three, four, five hours waiting to be able to serve by the persons of 
DSWD in the province. I mean, it's in my district, within the city of Dumaguete. And most of the time, I talk to your personnel, I talk to the one in charge, and they say they lack one personnel. Number two, they lack equipment. I have to do them on my own personal note, computers, printers, to be able to help them to deliver the service faster to the less privileged ones, because these are the people that usually go to the SWD. So they have a plan for how you conceptualize this to be able to at least address the issue of trying to help the less privileged ones get a better service, especially coming from the SWD. Your Honor, Mr. Chair, when I took uh, over, um, I asked uh, my Standards and Capacity Bureau and uh, Policy and Plans Program uh, offices to study yung pong pagbibigay ng ayuda kasi po tama ho kayo, uh, especially po doon sa AICS, yung mga hihingi po ng mga kababayan natin for medical, for yeah. burial, maabot po siya ng 2 to 3 days bago po maibigay sa kanila. Hindi po hours, 2 to 3 days pinapabalik pa. When I took over, Your Honor, Mr. Chair, ang sinabi ko, let us help them within 24 hours or today. So pag pumila po siya ng 6 o'clock, like what we're doing now in our central office, kailangan paglabas niya po ng 12 noon or alauna, hawak niya na po yung guarantee letter or yung ayuda na hinihingi niya provided kompleto po yung kanyang requirement. And binabaan na rin po natin, binawasan natin yung requirement. For example, pag uh, burial benefit pong hingi niya, kailangan lang po natin ng funeral contract at saka ID po at saka ay ayun po yung certificate ng uh, hospital kung wala pong funeral contract, ito eh, pwede na po yun para mabigyan po siya. Sa medical naman po, before uh, may mga hinihingi pa pong mga indigency, inalis na po natin yan because marami pong nagre-reklamo dyan, nagagamit daw nga po yan. So ang ginawa ko na lamang ho, kailangan ko na lang yung hospital bill at saka ID para matulungan po, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. So we cut it down, sir, to within several hours, may bibigay na po yung ayuda sa'yo, not only in a central office, but entire country, all 17 regions of the DSWD, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Okay. Your Honor, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Senator Jingoy Ejercito Estrada. Yes, yeah, so thank you very much for the response, uh, Mr. Secretary. And uh, I hope we can continue in servicing the less privileged ones in the best capacity that the department can do. You have my vote. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, give the floor to the Honorable Senator Risa Ontiveros for her questions. Salamat, Mr. Chair. Maganda umaga po, Secretary. Um, Una po tungkol sa expanded solo parents welfare law implementation na binanggit na rin ni Sek kanina. Uh, the effective implementation of the expanded solo parents welfare act relies much on the gathering and consolidation of the solo parent database and the DSWD is the repository of this database. Paano po ini-intend ng DSWD i-harmonize yung solo parent registry uh, mula sa listahan ng data ng inyong department at yun namang ding records ng community-based monitoring system ng mga LGUs. Uh, at pwede po bang makakuha ng time frame para sa consolidation itong database? Uh, Na-inform na ho namin, uh, Your Honor, uh, Mr. Chair, yung pong, uh, DILG kasi manggagaling po sa kanila yon Sila po yung magbibigay yung mga local government units mga munisipyo, mga lusod na magbibigay po ng uh, listahan sa DILG. Kami po ay uh, bibigyan ng DILG. Yun po inaantay namin and we have already informed them, uh, Your Honor, uh, uh, we asked them kung pwede as much as possible, uh, they can do it. So they were asking to give them a few months, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Salamat, uh, Mr. Chair. So, nung sinabi po ng DILG na ibibigay nila sa department niyo within a few months, um, may estimate po ba kayo kung posibleng within the first quarter of next year ito? 
Sana po, uh, Your Honor, uh, I, I believe, but we will have to ask them again kasi kailangan din po namin yun, uh, Your Honor, uh, Mr. Chair, para sa aming uh, file, sa aming system. Kasi po, baka may mga magre-reklamo, may mga magsusumbong, lalo na po sa mga retail industry, sa mga tindahan, kasi medyo yung mga solo parent po natin, may mga discounts po sila na matatanggap actually sa mga tindahan. Salamat, uh, Mr. Chair. Sec. So, kung sabi natin best case scenario, within first quarter, maibigay ng DILG sa department nyo yung uh, mga data nila, posible bang within the second quarter, makonsolidate na ng DSWD? So, by June, ay pwede na po talagang masimula ng lahat ng uh, solo parents uh, Uh, na nandun sa database nyo, pakinabangan lahat ng benefits sa batas. Your Honor, uh, kung uh, pahintulutan nyo ho ako, gagamitin ko yung pangalan nyo para kulitin po yung DILJ na ilabas po yung listahan within the first quarter, Your Honor. Okay lang naman po, Mr. Chair, uh, Sec, eh, kasi hindi naman galit sa akin si Sec Avalos. At tulad po ninyo, alam din nila na uh, tulad ni Majo at yung iba pang mga kasamahan dito ay uh, authors po ng Solo Parents, Expanded Solo Parents Welfare Act. Salamat, uh, Sec, Mr. Chair. And uh, now, the DILG also has a mandate to supervise LGUs to ensure that they're able to perform mandates that are assigned to them. Uh, they also have a program called the Seal of... Local good governance, good local governance, seal of good local governance that develops the indicators, including for social protection mandates, based on which recognition and rewards for minimum compliance are given. Uh, nakapag officially reach out na po ba kayo sec sa DILG sec ulit para siguruhin na yung indicators para sa minimum compliance dun sa Expanded Solo Parents Welfare Act ay maging bahagi ng SGLG goals ng LGUs. Opo, okay. actually, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair, meron po kaming initial na uh, usapin hinggil dyan pati then na uh... Uh, meron po, po kaming gagawin para mas extensive po yung uh, usapan hinggil dyan within the next few weeks so siguro o palipasin lang po itong uh, Christmas, Your Honor, Mr. Chair, para talagang mailatag po na maayos. Gusto ko talaga ho, Your Honor, Mr. Chair, na yan ay uh, tatakbo na smoothly. Uh, gusto ko lang po ipagbigay alam sa iyo, Your Honor, Mr. Chair, na... Yung uh, discounts na inaasam-asam po at inaantay ng mga solo parents para po doon sa may mga 0 to 6 year old, hindi po po makapag-umpisa kasi wala pa daw yung sinasabi po ng BIR. Ito po yung aming tinututukan ngayon at kinukulit po sila na kung pwede kasi hindi pa rin daw makapagbigay ng discounts kailangan daw sa BIR po yun. Uh, may approval po ng BIR. So ito po yung tinututukan natin, Your Honor, Mr. Chair, para ma-fully implement na po itong uh, expanded solo welfare uh, law, uh, Your Honor. Salamat, Mr. Chair, and I'm sure ma-appreciate din po ng mga partner LGUs ng department, maisaayos itong uh, usapin with the BIR, so yung pakinabang ng mga uh, solo parents sa mga discounts uh, na on the side of maging bahagi, hari nawa ito, uh, criteria para sa uh, SGLG. Sabi nyo, Sec, within a few weeks or yun na nga palipasin ang Pasko, so uh, posible po ba na, maganda po kasi kung Enero pa lang, unang buwan ng bagong taon, ay kasama na nga po yung Compliance sa Expanded Solo Parents Welfare Act uh, bilang criteria sa SGLG na alam na po ito ng mga LGU. So, posible po kaya within first month or months of the new year? Na-schedule na po yan. Uh, we have already uh, asked them. Uh, inaantay lang po namin ang uh, Department of Interior and Local Government. Uh, hinggil po dyan. So, uh, pabalikan po namin ulit sila, Your Honor, Mr. Chair, na kailangan na po talaga badly needed po yan. Kailangan na po talaga maipatupad yung batas na yan. Uh, Alang-alang po sa mga kababayan natin na solo parent, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. At hari na wasek, maisama nga po yung compliance doon Opa. sa SGLG criteria. Opa, Your Honor. Mr. Salamat po, Mr. Chair. Uh, dako naman po ako dun sa four-piece pantawid program ulit, uh, kasunod ng uh, interpolation ni Majo. Uh, in light of the various circumstances affecting the implementation of the four-piece program, at narinig ko nga po, Sec, binanggit nyo kanina yung ilang mga pangaabuso, pagsusugal, gamit yung uh, cash transfer, pagbebenta ng card. Bagamat, I would, I would uh, uh, 
say, SEC, Mr. Chair, batay sa mga documentation, minority lang po ito. Ang majority po ng mga four-piece uh, parent leaders, lalo na ay compliant po talaga. Kaya nga po, nakapagpatapos sila at ang department sa pamamagitan ng four-piece ng maraming uh, nagtapos sa mga high school bilang valedictorian pa at salutatorian at saka uh, mga yun, mga scholars sa SUCs. But, so in light of Various circumstances, including those, uh, I filed Senate Resolution 218 calling for the convening of the Four Peace Oversight Committee. Uh, this oversight committee shall initiate the sunset review of the program. So, mari po bang marinig uh, kay Sec uh, tungkol sa, kung dagdag po sa sinagot niyo na kay Majo, uh, uh, yung inyong assessment no sa Four Peace program, ano po yung mga current plans sa implementasyon noon, uh, uh, mga reforma, mga innovations na gusto nyong isulong? Uh, maraming salamat po, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Uh, susuportan ho namin yan. Uh, yan ho inyong uh, panukala, yung, yung resolution ho na yan. Kasi kailangan ho, kung ako ang tatanungin nyo personally sa Secretary of DSWD, kailangan po talagang reviewin po ang Department of So ang uh, four piece po natin. Kung talagang ito po ay effective. Effective naman ho siya, Madam Chair, uh, your, your Honor, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, unfortunately, yung nga ho sinasabi, kailangan lang ho merong i-fine tune po, Your Honor, Mr. Chair, uh, dyan po sa four-piece na yan. Kasi kagaya po nung sinasabi na marami po kasi biglang nawawala na lang, Your Honor, hindi naman ho nagpapaalam. E nasa IRR po yun, nasa batas po yun, na kailang magpaalam nila, magpaalam po sila pagkatapos. Bigla na lang po magsusumbo, magre-reklamo, pupunta po sa social media, bakit na hindi raw wala silang natanggap. Eh wala na po sila doon sa kanilang tinitirahan. Iba na po yung uh, kanilang uh, ika nga uh, uh, tirahan. O iba po eh, nag-abroad na po. Yun ang kailangan natin i-find uh, out uh, your honor, Madam Ch uh, Mr. Chair. Kasi yung iba po, pinapasa po nila. Naging OFW, pinapasa po nila sa nanay po nila. May, dapat hindi na po sila kasali. Yun po yung kailangan linawin po natin na uh, sino ba ang po pwede OFW. Kasi sabi naman po iba, eh, wala pa naman kaming 25,000 less lang kinikita namin. Dapat may papasok uh, po dyan. Pero may OFW, pero may anak pa rin ako. Hanggang ilan, hanggang anong grado. Kasi kung may anak po na anim, so yun ho ang uh, sinasabi natin so kung nakagraduate na po yung eldest hanggang sa bunso po ba kailangan tuloy-tuloy sila eh kung uh, ganun ho mangyayari your honor madam chair eh, so sobra po sila dun sa limit na 7 years lamang na naipasa po ng kongreso uh, your honor madam chair Salamat, Sec. Uh, Mr. Chair, I think moving forward, eh, mga importanteng uh, tanong o issue po yun na kailangang talakayin ng department at sa anumang support ang maibibigay ng uh, lehislatura. Uh, interesting po, for example, yung point yung Sec na tungkol dun sa hanggang gaanong katagal. Naalala ko po tuloy na maging po dito sa kaninang pinag-usapan nating expanded solo parents welfare law ay in-extend po yung unang uh, pakinabang hanggang 18 years old lamang sa 22 years old. So in any case, progressive naman po yung legislation at uh, kapag po may uh, input or payo mula sa si executive ay mas napapaganda po namin ang mga batas at ng executive ang implementasyon nito. So, I'll leave it at that for now, uh, Sec, Mr. Chair. So, mga huling general questions na lang po, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, the President mentioned in his SONA that one of the objectives of his administration is to right-size the bureaucracy. However, your office increased the number of undersecretaries and by extension, additional staff requirements for each USEC. Uh, mari po bang magtanong sa rationale ng mga appointments na ito? Uh, at paano po nito uh, tutulungan ang DSWD na efficiently at effectively i-deliver ang inyong mga programa at serbisyo in light din po sa plan devolution uh, ng ilan sa mga functions nyo gaya ng binagit na rin ni Rep sa Garbaria? Your Honor, Mr. Chair, siguro kung uh, magde-devolve na po yung ilang programs po natin next year, siguro mababawasan na rin po yung mga tao ho namin or, or after this uh, administration or uh, within within the next few years. 
Kasi po, Your Honor, Mr. Chair, we have so many programs po na to attend. Uh, uh, isang example po dyan, sa four-piece na lamang po, uh, kailangan natin ng mga municipal link to check on the welfare of these people or status po ng mga members po natin. Meron din po tayo yung tinatawag namin na yung mga special project na grupo. Uh, meron din po kami uh, yung mga USEC for special concerns. Uh, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair, para naman uh, matignan po yung mga ibang programa kung na-execute po properly. Kadulad po nito mga community-based programs po natin ng mga kalahi seeds po na yan. Yung mga sustainable livelihood program po na yan. So, Kailangan po namin ng tao na to run all these programs po dahil sa madami po siyang program, kailangan po may follow through. Hindi po kasi pag ibinigay po natin yung pondo, eh, hindi na po natin babalikan. Kailangan pong balikan at kailangan pong uh, nga, mabantayan po na talagang hindi po na will waste, hindi po na sasayang yung pera na bigay po ng pamahalaan. Salamat, Sek. Um, Mr. Chair, so I guess pagbabalanse yung hinahanap natin pareho. Naintindihan ko naman po, Mr. Chair, yung sinabi ni Sek na rasyonale na para pangasiwaan itong mga dagdag na USEC, yung mga dagdag na programa o proyekto. Uh, pero yun, dahil nga kung may planadong devolution, kailangan pa rin bantayan, again, moving forward, yung efficiency at saka uh, effectiveness. Uh, and then, Uh, pangalawang general question ko, Mr. Chair, uh, dati po kayong journalist, secretary, and in the course of your work, uh, maring may mga nasabi kayong masasakit na salita na at least isa ay nag-apologize na po kayo at na-appreciate ko po yun. Nasa PIR na rin po ninyo na may nasabi rin kayong masasakit na salita sa isang online personality. Uh, nag Iniisip ko po kung nakapag-apologize na rin po uh, sec kayo sa kanya. Pero uh, lalapitan ko na lang po kayo pagkatapos ng hearing para magtanong ng mas Uh, specific. I know uh, Mr. Chair, good secretary, now that he's already in government, uh, will be even more careful uh, and sensitive with his statements. At salamat po uh, kung ganoon, uh, Secretary. So huling general question ko po uh, para sa interpolation na ito, Mr. Chair. Upon your appointment to the DSWD, some social workers observed that you are inclined to engage in traditional or conventional social work. According to them, it means that under your leadership, the DSWD will promote and practice a system of patronage in the delivery of social services. If this is the case, it would necessarily negate gains brought about by transformative social work and programs uh, would be rendered vulnerable to partisan uh, objectives. So, mari po bang mahingi yung mga kaisipan niyo, Sek, kung papaano yung leadership ninyo ay magsisigurado ng isang transformative and development-oriented na social work practice? When I assume office, uh, Your Honor, Madam Chair, I mean, Mr. Chair, uh, ang una ko pong instructions po sa mga tao ko na I have an open door policy. Okay, I will listen to uh, ideas, to opinions, lalo na po na mga matatagal na po sa DSWD. Kasi bago lang po tayo dyan. And uh, they're coming in po, uh, Your Honor, yung mga ideas na ito brought by by uh, uh, old employees, yung mga matatagal na po sa DSWD. Pangalawa po, we want naman, uh, Your Honor, is to, to deliver all the services uh, Uh, quickly as much as possible and on time pagkatapos ma-address po lahat ng problema ng mga kababayan ho natin ang gusto ko lang ho na, na may marching order to everyone sa DSWD po is that let us do our best and uh, do what we do best uh, to help those vulnerable, the poor, the needy, the marginalized as soon as possible. Uh, hindi naman uh, we cannot promise to alleviate their 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 ikang hardships uh, sa buhay po. Pero we will have to try as much as possible given the funds, uh, the funding, and the time that uh, the government uh, gave us. Yun po yung aking instruction, uh, uh, Your Honor, Madam Chair. Maraming salamat po, Sek. Uh, Damang salamat, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you very much, Senator uh, Ontiveros. We now acknowledge uh, Senator Pongo uh, online to ask questions. Mr. Chair, esteemed uh, members of this uh, commission, 
would like to express my utmost uh, support uh, for the ad interim appointment of Secretary Erwin Tishiba Tulfo as Secretary of uh, the Department of Social Welfare and uh, Development. The Department of uh, Social Welfare and Development is the primary government uh, agency mandated to develop, implement, and coordinate social protection and poverty reduction solutions for and with the poor. Uh, Ito pong pisinang ito ay napakahalaga po uh, sila po at talaga ang uh, nakatutok sa mga mahirap. Isa lang po ang pakiusap ko kay Secretary Tulpo. Uh, huwag niyo pong pabayaan yung mga kababayan nating uh, mahirap, yung mga helpless, yung mga hopeless at yung mga walang uh, matakbuhan. At alam ko po uh, may puso po kayo sa ating mga mahirap. The pandemic as well as uh, many natural disasters have brought so much uh, devastation to the country. Kaya naman po ang panawagan ko kay Secretary Erwin ay prioritize po natin ang kapakanan ng ating kapwa. Lalo na po sa panahon na ngayon, pinabagyo talaga tayo. Kaya naman uh, napakalaking hamon nga po sa departamento ito. Magtulungan tayo, magbayanihan po tayo sa kakabuti ng ating bansa. Let us continue uh, striving towards providing a comfortable uh, life for all. Katulad na lang nung administrasyon ni dating Pangulong uh, Duterte, may git kumulang one 1.12 million na katao po ang nakatanggap ng assistance under the IX program uh, data from March 22 April uh, 2021 during the previous administration marami po ang nabay, na bahagian ng uh, na, ng tulong na tulungan po dapat hindi itigil ang programa na nakakatulong sa sa baba if there are leaks in the implementation let us plug the holes and make sure it reaches the right uh, beneficiaries who need government attention the most Sikapin po na padamihin pa, uh, sikapin natin na padamihin pa po sa inyong uh, termino. Alam ko naman po sa pamumuno ninyo, uh, Secretary Tulpo, ay mas lalo pang mapapalakas at mas uh, dadami pa ang matutulungan ng gobyerno. Tagal ko na pong kilala si Secretary Erwin, madalas uh, bumisita sa Dabao nung uh, broadcaster pa siya. Kita ko ang kanyang salobin at hangarin na tumulong para sa kapwa. Kaya naman labis ko ikinakatuwa na nabigyan siya ng pagkakatao na maging sekretary ng DSWD na ang mandato po ay tumulong sa mga mahirap. Kung dati maraming sumas uh, sum sumasabaybay, sumusubaybay sa inyong programa, tsak na marami po kami sumusubaybay sa iyo at aasan makakatulong ka ng husto na masiguro walang maiwan po sa muli nating uh, pagbangon. Secretary Erwin You have my uh, full trust and confidence. Maraming salamat po sa iyong servisyo, lalo-lalo na po sa mga uh, kababayan nating uh, mahirap. Unahin natin lagi ang interes na mahirap. Uh, gastusin niyo po ang pondo ng gobyerno para tulungan. May ahon ang ating mga kababayan, lalong-lalo na po yung mga helpless at hopeless na walang masandalan o matakbuhan kundi ang gobyerno. Maraming salamat at mabuhay po kayo. Thank you, Senator Bongo. The chair would like to acknowledge the online presence of uh, Senator Grace Po. We now give the floor to Honorable uh, Congressman G.P. Padianos for questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, uh, we all know that uh, as an effect of the climate change, mas dumadalas at tumitindi ang mga bagyo na sumasalanta sa ating bansa. Our nominee has mentioned that One of his primary objectives is to ensure that the, that the DSWD is always at the front lines. So when natural calamities occur, ano po ang mga programa ng DSWD para maibsan ang kahirapan na dinudulot uh, ng mga kalamidad na ito, Mr. Secretary? Your Honor, uh, Mr. Chair, marami pong programa ng DSWD para makatulong sa mga kababayan natin na mahirap. Uh, nandiyan po yung uh, mas kilala na four Ps. Pero kung yung mga kababayan ho natin, mga nasa lanta, when you're talking about uh, climate change, na naapektuhan po ng mga pagbaha, pagbagyo, meron po tayong initially na binibigay po kaagad na AIX, yung Assistance for Individual in Crisis Situation, para makaumpisa po sila muli, maparepare po yung kanilang munting bahay, Uh, ano po kung talagang nawalan po sila ng kinita, for example, sa kahan o konting negosyo, yung kanilang mga manuka na babuyan, uh, nagbibigay po kami ng sustainable livelihood, uh, ika nga, uh, Your Honor. Uh, 
Meron din ho kami yung community base kung yung uh, community po yung kanilang uh, mga negosyo na wipe out po. Meron po kami rin uh, programa yung tinatawag na kapit bisig laban sa kahirapan. It's a community driven uh, program po para sa mga kababayan natin na nasa lanta po ng kalamidad. Uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary. And nakikita ko naman yung ginagawa niya, especially yung nakaraang bagyo. Makikita natin na ang butihing uh, secretary ay talagang very active. And in fact, nakita ko yun. Last time ka nga dapat pa na confirm pero because of mga bagyo, umahabol pa rito para ma-confirm. So you got my support na for that. Uh, sa mga ginagawa mo, Mr. Secretary, ay you got my support. Maraming salamat po, Your Honor. Okay, thank you, Congressman Pajarnos. The Honorable uh, Malapitan is uh, recognized. Thank you and good morning, uh, Mr. Chair. Tungkol na rito sa tupad, Mr. Secretary, wala namang revision ng pagbibigay ng tupad ng AIX. Pwede bigay ng Pasko, Piesta, mga kalamidad. Nagtataka lang ako sa amin nung nakaraang eleksyon. A day before election, may mga nagbibigay pa o nagbibigay ng tupad, nagbabayad. So, sana, i-exempt naman natin yung eleksyon pagka ganitong uh, payout ng uh, tupad or uh, ng uh, IX. Chinek naman namin, wala naman prohibition talaga. Pero, parang hindi ho tama, eh, day before election, doon magdi-distribute at gamit pa ang uh, DSWD. So, sana makakorek ko natin itong ganitong uh, uh, practice sa inyong panahon sa sekretary ng uh, DSWD. Sige po, Your Honor, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, bibisitahin ho namin yan. Uh, pero, yan po kasi siguro kailangan ho natin ng isang batas po para ayusin ho at baguhin ho yan uh, at saka ng uh, ikang IRR tungol po dyan. Kasi kayo na rin nagsabi na wala pong prohibisyon. Pero kung uh, gusto po ninyong lagyan ho yan, po pwede naman ho uh, sa, sa tulong na rin po ng Kongreso. Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Isa pa ho, ano? Naging enlisted personnel ho pala kayo ng Philippine na uh, uh, ng uh, U.S. Army. Uh, 1988, 1988 to 1992. Ang tanong ko lang ho, eh, din announce niyo ba yung inyong Filipino citizenship? Uh, well, Your Honor, Mr. Chair, I would like to ask for an executive session on, on this matter. He's asking for an executive session to answer the question. Okay, so uh, may we skip that uh, unless you have other questions, uh, Honorable Malapitan? Wala na, sige, yun na lang. Okay, so the Honorable Secretary is requesting for an executive uh, session. So will the members uh, proceed first with asking other questions before we go to the executive? Mr. Chair, just to yes. formalize, there's a request motion for an executive session. Is there any objection? Maybe we can uh, let all the uh, members of the commission ask questions first before uh, proceeding to the executive session. Okay lang. We, we, we agree to that. Okay. So uh, we first allow all members to finish asking their questions before we proceed to the executive uh, session. Okay. Uh, Honorable uh, Marcoleta, you are now recognized to ask questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Secretary, a, a follow-up to the question of uh, my colleague, uh, Congressman Malapitan. It's about your being an enlisted uh, personnel of the United States Army for several years, and you have been in active military service stationed in Europe 
from 1992 to 1996. Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, to be an enlisted personnel in the U.S. Army, either you are a citizen by birth, meaning to say you are a U.S. citizen, or you have acquired U.S. citizenship by uh, naturalization, or that you are a lawful permanent resident. Uh, and there were circumstances did you I mean what is the status of your citizenship when you were enlisted uh, member of the US Army and when you serve as uh, an active military service station in Europe sir Mr. Chair with all yeah. due respect sir, uh, Congressman Marcoletta I think uh, the good secretary has asked for the executive session with regard to your uh, okay. question Okay, Maybe and can, there's another can, question. Uh, jump to, to another question. Uh, My other question, uh, Mr. Secretary, also appears in the report of the Commission. This is the PIR, the Profile Investigation Report, because it is indicated here that you were also convicted four times in the RTC in Pasay City. Is this still covered by the uh executive so it was tended only on uh the citizenship oh, okay i can answer that uh, your honor mr chair yes, yes please, please. Uh, secretary uh th that uh, case uh, is related to my uh profession as a journalist uh, your honor mr chair uh uh, there was a conviction that that's correct but it is uh because of uh my line of work as a journalist that's uh, it's a libel, uh, four counts of libel. Same individual, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. What does that exactly mean, uh, Mr. Secretary? If uh, you were convicted four times in a case involving uh, a single individual, no, what you, what it's you... not uh, for convictions, actually, it's the count, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair, four counts of uh, libel that I was uh, convicted uh, by the same individual. I was a columnist, and I write a story about the person, uh, about the government official, actually, and uh, I have my sources, and I was compelled by the court to divulge my sources, but I did not. So uh, it went all the way up to the Court of Appeals and to the Supreme Court, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. And yes, that is exactly the point, Mr. Chair. There are four counts of libel, and you were convicted by the Pasai Court, and on appeal, the Court of Appeals affirmed the conviction all the way up to the Supreme Court. And so, by record, and as it appears in the, prof in the uh, file report, Mr. Secretary, it stands as a fact that you were convicted for counts of libel. Is that is that correct? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, uh, I, I admit that uh, there was a case, uh, but it was, uh, like I said, in line with my work as a journalist, and it's one of the hazards of the trade, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Well, of course, you, you were precisely convicted because of your work. You are a, a journalist. But that does not change the situation. You can be convicted uh, either way in any other vocation, but uh, the fact stands that there is a conviction. The problem we're trying to uh, press out here, Mr. Chair, is whether or not his conviction will be uh, a, uh, an issue in the uh, process of confirmation because as the Supreme Court enunciated in several cases, Mr. Chair, um, libel is an offense that involves moral turpitude. And in, in some other cases uh, disposed by the Supreme Court, there were certain people who were disqualified from holding positions because 
they have been convicted of crimes involving moral turpitude. This, this is the dilemma, Mr. Secretary. Of course, I am uh, in support of your, uh, of your uh, confirmation as Secretary of uh, BSWD. And uh, I believe you have uh, just uh, succeeded in uh, proving to, uh, to our people that you are qualified. Uh, but uh, this is a problem that we need to trace out, Mr. Chair. Uh, how do we uh, how, how do we dispose this uh, this dilemma before us? Because it is in the report. I could not have asked you this question, uh, Mr. Secretary, if it does not if it did not appear in the report submitted to us by the commission uh, uh, on appointments. Mr. Chair, thank you, Majority Leader. Mr. Chair, considering that there are there was a request and uh, the line of questioning. Uh, will be tackled within the executive session. Uh, since we are a collegial body, we have to tackle this as a group. So may I suggest and reiterate, Mr. Chair, that uh, we proceed for an executive session. So move, Mr. Chair. Okay, there's a motion to be seconded. Mr. Chair. Honorable Scudero. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I do take note of the comments of um, Congressman Marcoleta. However, I would like to state for the record as well that there are many pending bills, both in the House and in the Senate, to decriminalize um, libel. libel. In fact, the visit by our own DOJ secretary to the United Nations, that was in fact even suggested by the Canadian representative. And I myself am an author um, of a bill seeking to decriminalize um, libel. So if this would be taken against the um, nominee, um, and later on, that bill is um, approved by Congress. I think it would be prejudicial, to say the least, and unfair if you would be taking that um, against him. Just for the consideration of the committee, um, Mr. Chairman, when we go into caucus later. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Honorable Escudero. So, the body would like to proceed to the executive session already, or? Uh, we still have uh, Senator J.V. Lani, Senator Estrada, and Senator Cheese would want to ask questions. So, what is the pleasure of the body? Mr. Chair, uh, my question is no relation to uh, the two uh, issues with regards to his case and his uh, citizenship. It is regarding uh, the program of the DSW. Mr. Okay. So, there's a pending uh, motion which has been duly seconded. Uh, yeah. Uh, Reiterate there's an early request suggestion of uh, our colleagues. Uh, I move to suspend the uh, committee deliberation and proceed to have an executive session, Mr. Chair. And we can proceed uh, with questioning after. Okay, so there's a motion duly seconded. Any objection? We now have a, an executive uh, session. Members attending via WebEx platform to please stay on the online meeting room for the executive session. The non-member participants on board the WebEx platform will be transferred to the online lobby for the duration of the executive session. And the guests, officers, and staff of the commission physically present in this room are likewise requested to vacate the room immediately. And may I request our OSAA to facilitate the orderly exit of guests and staff. Thank you.
Committee of the Committee is here by Richard, Majority Leader. Mr. Chair, due to some concerns of the members as raised by Congressman Marcoleta and the motion of uh, Senator Aimee to get further documentation and opinions from uh, experts, uh, I move to defer uh, deliberation of uh, the nominee, uh, Secretary uh, Erwin Tulfo. Uh, I so move, Mr. Chair. There no Is there any objection? Hearing none, the, the motion is hereby approved. Mr. Sure. Chair, um, there will be no matters to discuss. I move to adjourn uh, the deliberations on uh, this committee. I so move, Mr. Chair. Any objection? Okay, the meeting of the committee is hereby adjourned. Uh, we just have a 30 minute lunch break, uh, Majority Leader. And yes. uh, after that, we come back to tackle uh, Secretary Bonon. All right, thank you.
Good afternoon. The first meeting of the Committee on Public Works and Highways of the Commission on Appointments in the first session of the 19th Congress is hereby called to order. May the uh, Secretary of the Commission please uh, call the roll. Uh, the Honorable Members, the Honorable Officers and Members of the Committee on Public Works and Highways, Vice Chairperson Senator Francis Chis G. Escudero, Representative Greg G. Gasataya, Senator Lauren Legarda, Members Senator Maria Lourdes Nancy S. Binay, Representative Virginel G. Biron, MD, Senator Jingoy Ejercito Estrada, Representative Albert S. Garcia, Senator, for, Senator Christopher Bong Go, Senator Risa Ontiveros, Representative Oscar Oka G. Malapitan, Senator Aimi R. Marcos, Senator Grace Po, Representative Lani Mercado Revilla, Representative Jordine Jesus M. Romualdo, Representative Manuel T. Sagarbaria, Senator Francis Tol N. Tolentino, Senator Cincha A. Villar, our ex officio members, Vice Chairperson Representative Ramon N. Guico Jr., Present. Majority Floor Leader Representative Luis Raymond L. Ray F. Villafuerte Jr., Assistant Majority Floor Leader Senator Joseph Victor G. Ejercito, Minority Floor Leader Senator Alan Peter Compañero S. Cayetano, Assistant Minority Floor Leader Representative Jose Gay G. Padernos, Assistant Minority Floor Leader Representative Johnny T. Pimentel. The Chairperson is present. With 10 members present in person, including the chair. And no member present online with a total of 10 members present. The existence of a quorum is hereby declared. Mr. Chair. Senator uh, Risa is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just manifesting my presence. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Esteemed members of the committee, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Today, your committee will deliberate on the ad interim appointment of Secretary Manuel Manligas Bonoan as Secretary of the Department of Public Works and Highways. May we hear the Commission Secretary's report on the jurisdictional requirements and other pertinent information relative to such appointment in compliance with the new rules of the Commission and the rules of the Standing Committees. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson, Your Honours. The ad interim appointment of Secretary Manuel Manlingas Bonoan as Secretary of the Department of Public Works and Highways dated September 29, 2022, was received by the Commission on October 6, 2022, and was referred by the CA Chairman Juan Miguel Migs F. Zubiri on the same date to the, Commission, to the Committee on Public Works and Highways for its appropriate action pursuant to Section 16, Chapter 5 of the New Rules of the Commission. The ad interim appointment under consideration was published on July 28 and 29, 2022 in two newspapers of general circulation and broadcast over PTB4 pursuant to Section 2, Article 2 of the Rules of the Standing Committees. The appointee has complied with the submission of the mandatory documentary requirements on September 21, 2022 as provided in Section 24, Chapter 6 of the New Rules of the Commission. The Commission Secretariat received on September 27, 2022, a manifestation of support from the DPWH Central Office Employees Union for the confirmation of the ad interim appointment of Secretary Manuel M. Bonoan as Secretary of the Department of Public Works and Highways. The Commission Secretariat has not received any opposition against the appointee under consideration. That is all, Mr. Chairman, Your Honors. Madam Secretary, please administer the oath to Secretary Manuel Bonoan. May we request Secretary Bonoan to please stand and raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings? So help you, God. I do. Mr. Chairman, the appointee is now under oath. The committee will now deliberate on the ad interim appointment of Secretary Manuel M. Bonoan, Secretary of the Department of Public Works and Highways. 
May we call on the appointee under consideration to take the seat in front, and you are now here. You may now give an opening statement, uh, if you wish, Mr. Secretary. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. The uh, distinguished uh, senators and uh, congressmen composing the Commission on, on Appointments, a pleasant afternoon. First of all, uh, uh, it is uh, an honor and uh, a privilege to appear before you today to humbly submit myself to the process of confirmation of my ad interim appointment as Secretary of the Department of Public Works and Highways. I am Manuel Manligas Bonoan, a native of Solsona, Ilocos Norte. I am a licensed civil engineer with five decades of extensive experience in public and private the sectors combined. Homegrown, rose through the ranks. These are the words that are descriptive of my service to the Department of Public Works and Highways. I entered the government service under the then Bureau of Public Highways as a civil engineering aide, a daily wage employee in 1966, as a working student while I was in my senior year at the Mapua Institute of Technology. After getting my license as civil engineer in 1967, I was given a regular entry level position as junior civil engineer in the same bureau in, this, in 1968. From there on, I went through every step of the ladder of my professional career in the public service until I reached the position of senior under secretary of the Department of Public Works and Highways in 2007. In my 44 years with the Department of Public Works and Highways, I briefly served under the, depart the department as officer in charge in 2007 under the administration of former President Gloria Macapagal-Arroyo. I retired as senior undersecretary in 2010. On top of uh, public service, I was also active in socio-economic organizations for licensed civil engineers. I was president of the Philippine Institute of Civil Engineers from 2001 to 2003, president of the Society of Philippine Accredited Consultants from 1998 to 1999, and president of the Road Engineering Association of the Philippines from 1994 to 1996. After my retirement in the Department of Public Works and Highways, I gained employment uh, with the private sector in 2011 in San Miguel Corporation. I served as a consultant, advisor for its infrastructure sector, and as president and chief executive of its three subsidiary companies, namely the Skyway O&M Corporation, Star Tollway Corporation, and the Manila Toll Expressway Systems Incorporated. I managed the operations of tollways, including South Metro Manila Skyway System, South Luzon Expressway, Nae Expressway, and the Southern Tagalog Artillery Road Tollways. Achieving the goal of elevating the experience of travel in the expressways to the highest standards of safety, speed, and convenience was indeed a very rewarding task. After my retirement from the Department of Public Works and Highways in 2010, I thought my career in government had already reached its peak and had come to a conclusion. It is quite unimaginable how one day, my apparently concluded career in the department is suddenly resurrected. This is when, just after the elections, then President elect Ferdinand Romaldes Marcos Jr. personally asked me if I'm willing to join his cabinet as Secretary of the Department of Public Works and Highways. It was not an easy decision for me to accept the offer, considering the reluctance of my family and plus other considerations. But then finally, on my own, I accepted the offer to be at the helm of the DPWH for the love of country. Given the second chance to serve the Department of Public Works and Highways, I'm well aware that the job is enormous, especially in these challenging times. I recognize that the Department of Public Works and Highways is one of the key agencies that can stimulate economic progress and uh, relaunch our country out of the effects of the pandemic. With the trust endowed to me by the President uh, Ferdinand Marcos Jr., I am absolutely committed as ever to pave the way for the DPWH to fulfill its role at the forefront of the government's infrastructure development program. 
The operative phrase is, com is completion with precision. The more we fast track our build better more projects, the more we also fast track the nation's progress. I plan to steer the Department of Public Works and Highways role in the infrastructure development program under the administration of President Ferdinand Marcos to provide efficient road network to reduce travel time vis-a-vis -vis transport costs. We have to improve road safety and quality and protect the lives of properties from natural disasters. All these are in line with the medium-term agenda of this administration, which is meant to eradicate poverty and raise the standards of living in the Philippines. My aspiration to lead the department to become, to become the standard of competence, proficiency, and integrity for good governance. With the indulgence of the Commission, modesty aside, I am more than ready to take these challenges of leading the Department of Public Works and Highways. I humbly submit my professional competence and technical expertise, both in public and private sectors, to the scrutiny of the constitutional body for commission as Secretary of the Department of Public Works and Highways. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Before proceeding any further, the Chair uh, acknowledges the presence of uh, Senator Grace Paul, Senator Bongo, Senator Nancy Binay, and, Sen and uh, Congresswoman Lani Mercado Rebilia. I believe the uh, appointee is now ready to respond to any query or comments coming from the members, and the floor is open for such. I acknowledge first Senator uh, Paul Tolentino. Proceed, uh, Senator. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This, this is not a line of questioning, but a short manifestation of support because with the permission of this uh, committee, committee, I am about to leave because I have to proceed to Batangas for a speaking engagement. But before I leave, I would like to express and convey my full support to the confirmation of Secretary Manuel Bonoan's appointment as Secretary of the Department of Public Works and Highways. And my manifestation of support should likewise be inserted and reflected in today's plenary, just in case I won't be able to uh, log in via Zoom. And um, Mr. Chairman, I believe that uh, as explained by the Secretary, the good Secretary is not just homeborn, he is an aborigin. Uh, DPWH, he is an indigenous DPWH, having worked his way up uh, since becoming a clerk, civil engineering aide in 1966, all the way up to becoming a senior undersecretary in 2010. He served said department for almost five decades, including his stint in, with the private sector. Kaya nga po, Mr. President, Buo po ang tiwala natin na magiging mahusay po si Secretary Bunoan. Kaya't, uh, kaya't ko nga ited ti buo nga suporta para iti kompermasyon ni Secretary Manuel Bunoan ka Secretary T, Department of Public Works and Highways. Manong, uh, ket sigurado uh, magiging iti nakinkari nga epekto ti DPWH. You will be a good Secretary. We hope that you will do that. So Mr. Uh, Chairman, I again reiterate my full support. He was always there. Uh, my, my recent experience was during the last Paeng typhoon when I learned from uh, some LG officials in Saryaya and San Juan Batangas that he personally inspected the bridge connecting Saryaya, Quezon, and Batangas, that Bantilan Bridge, uh, Mr. Secretary, and he promised uh, the LGUs there, including this representation, that a temporary will, bridge will be completed. Uh, with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, again, I express my full support without any questions. Salamat po. Agyamana. Thank you for the first indigenous uh, manifestation of support, Senator Toll. And that is duly noted by the Secretary. Thank you, Thank you. Your Honor. Uh, Thank you very much. 
So, uh, I acknowledge my colleague, uh, Congressman uh, Pimentel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We have no questions to Secretary Bani Bunuan, but I would like to manifest my uh, support. I have known Secretary Bunuan for many, many years now because his son is married to my niece-in-law. And through the years that I have known him, I have found him to be a very upright and kind person. In fact, in the committee secretariat report, he is described by DPWH's informants and employees as a competent, hardworking, approachable, and accommodating leader, characterized as an accessible boss who is not so plado and is often palabiro, reportedly the first one at times to even greet an employee whom he meets in the hallways of the department. I truly believe that this uh, committee report is correct because at the moment, I believe Secretary Bonoan is the most amiable, most approachable secretary that we have now in the executive department. More than that, his appointment as DPDL secretary was reportedly welcomed by the employees and officers of the department in view of his long established reputation for competence, fitness, and integrity. Well respected in the department for being an insider who rose from the ranks. Again, this report is truly correct because based on the profile he started, his work in the DPWH in June 1966. So he rose from the ranks and has been an employee of DPWH for 44 years. So meaning he's the most competent to hold the position of secretary of DPWH. More than that, he worked also in the private sector for almost 20 years. So I believe, Mr. Chair, the Secretary Bonoan in view of his record, in view of his character, in view of his leadership capabilities, he is the right person to head the DPWH. Therefore, Mr. Chair, I give my 1,000% support to Secretary Mani Bonoan. Thank you, uh, Congressman Pimentel. Uh, before proceeding, uh, let me acknowledge the presence of uh, Senator Aini Marcos and Mr. Senator J.B. Hersito, as well as my colleague, uh, Representative Oka Malapitan. Uh, majority leader is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I also subscribe to the statement of Secretary Boro on the second time is always the best time. Uh, nah. uh, depends on your interpretation, but uh, no. Only a rare few are uh, given a chance to serve in the same department as you. And uh, you already know in your department kung sino ang performing, qualified, sino ang uh, bolero. So I think uh, the Department of Public Works is in good hands under your leadership. And uh, yung mga sinabi na aming colleagues ay tama naman. Uh, you're a very humble, simple person, but uh, your task is gargantuan. So we... I don't know if I will congratulate you or wish you luck, but uh, for the good of the country, please uh, help this administration uh, fulfill its mandate in uh, infrastructure. Ako, ano lang, meron lang akong gustong erase na minor issue. Oh, maybe, <laughs> meron kasi mga complaints uh, uh, among uh, district engineers and mga contractors association. There are companies within the DPWH uh, na nagbibid, no? Not within, uh, mga contractors, na ang trabaho lang ay uh, nagbibid, sumasali ng gugulo, tapos sumasahod lang. Uh, I think uh, we want to call your attention. No? Uh, this was uh, provided to me and under your leadership siguro, uh, please attend to them. No? Uh, this complaint, uh, yung mga kumpanyang to, siguro for possible, pag-aralan nyo kung iba blacklist ba to o hindi. Uh, I'm sure you've received reports. Uh, meron silang staff all over the country bumibili ng bid documents sumasali uh, uh, with the uh, with the business uh, strategy of sahod 
Ito mga kumpanyang to, uh, Mr. Secretary, for your information, nakikinig ang publiko, ang mga pangalan ay Precious Construction, St. Gerard Construction, Honeyville Construction, Ware Construction, uh, St. Timothy Construction, Alpha and Omega Construction, WCX Construction, St. Matthew Construction, OL De Leon Construction. For your info lang po, and I trust that you will act on this kasi uh, ginugulo nila po ang uh, batas na procurement. Uh, they just bid for the sake of guluhin. And we don't want that to happen. Secondly po, uh, there's, a, there's an NGO in the name of Crime and Corruption Watch. An accredited NGO in the DPWH, not during your time in the previous administration, headed by a certain Carlo Batalia. Ang modus operandi po niya, Secretary, NGO po siya, meaning observer po siya sa mga bidding nationwide. But ginagamit po niya yung position niya para mag-extort sa mga contractors. And I know hindi niyo papayagan yan. At marami na pong akong na-receive sa aking opisina na ginagawa nila ito. At uh, kilala pa namin to si Carlo Batalia. Uh, hindi naman to anti-crime crusader. Short of saying, uh, alleged extortionist po to. So yun lang po, uh, we don't want this administration and in your leadership to be damaged by these shady characters. So we hope, uh, Mr. Secretary, you can attend to these complaints. Uh, these are not my personal complaints. These are complaints from contractors association and groups within uh, the infrastructure sector. Uh, maybe you can respond. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, thank you, Your Honor, and thank you for bringing this up. Rest assured, Your Honor, that we will attend to it 100% uh, in order that we can clean up uh, and uh, put more uh, uh, good governance in uh, my administration in the department, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I fully support uh, the nomination of uh, Secretary Bonoan. And again, reiterate the DPWH and our country is in good hands under his leadership. Rami Salamat, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Congel Ray. Uh, before that, uh, Madam uh, Senator, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of my colleague, JP Congressman JP Padiernos. Senator Ani, you're recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm certain there's an adequate explanation for this. Um, Secretary Bonoan, please, in your sal in of June 30, 2022, there's a receivables amount of 32 million. Apparently, you gained these receivables only sometime between June 30, 2021 and June 30, 2022. Um, may we know the details of said receivables? That's all. Uh, I believe this receivables, uh, Your Honor, if I uh, have to uh, look into uh, the details of it, are actually some of them are actually a part of uh, the uh, uh, retirement pay that I received from um, my private uh, practice in uh, San Miguel Corporation and uh, and uh, mostly, Your Honor, I think uh, it came from there. And uh, I, I could imagine that there, uh, there had been some also that uh, came from the other uh, uh, family business that uh, we had been into, Your Honor. Yes, thank you. I uh, have been informed that they derive actually from still unpaid retirement, separation, and others. So uh, we put that question to rest. And with that, uh, while some have had trouble with unexplained wealth, I uh, wish to attest that in the case of Secretary Bonoan, we joke in Ilocos Norte that he has unexplained poverty. So uh, I think that uh, he is uh, fit for the job in more ways than one, highly qualified, and uh, indeed recycled as our secretary during the time when uh, infrastructure was in its heyday. So we hope to repeat the golden age of public works. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Aimee. Uh, so Senator Sincha Bilger is recognized. Uh, Secretary Bonoan, I just want to ask this question about right of way. Uh, 
is right out right of way is very important in implementing our infrastructure projects and i want to ask the dpwh if the right of way acquisition is your responsibility in uh, implementing infrastructure projects uh, yes uh, your honor uh, the uh, the uh, the responsibility for uh, the acquisition of road right of way right of way particularly in the implementation of our national road uh, national roads your honor is under our responsibility and plus uh, there are other uh, other infrastructure projects of national significance that we implement and we will uh, we also uh, it's under the responsibility of the department your honor There is a complaint that the Alex is having difficulty because of right of way problems. So maybe you should look into it so that uh, we can implement the Alex. Kasi medyo delayed na yung Alex and uh, and parang sinasabi nila parang ang DPWH. Maybe this is in the lower echelon of the DPWH. They don't want to be responsible for the right of way brought up. Uh, right of way problem so i hope that uh, the dpwh will realize that if you don't interfere in the right of way problem because you have a right of eminent domain when we're building roads then our right our infrastructure projects will be delayed so yun lang po and i wish you good luck uh, uh secretary bunoan in your new career uh come back in career in dpwh thank you very much Thank you very much, Your Honor. And certainly we will look into, uh, it has been brought to my attention actually, the, the issue on the right of way for the acquisition for the Calax. And uh, we will uh, certainly put our good effort actually to acquire the necessary right of way, Your Honor. Senator Goy is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I convey my uh, full support for the ad interim appointment of Secretary uh, Manuel Bonoan. As a Secretary of the DPWH, Secretary Bonoan is no stranger to the department, having first served in government as a SEC in the DPWH during the administration of former President Fidel Ramos. The private sector naman po, Secretary Bonoan was responsible for many important projects, notably the Skyway, the Naia Expressway, the Southern, the South Luzon Expressway, and the Tarlac Pangasinan La Union Expressway, among others. Given his significant experiences, I believe that Secretary Bonoan will be instrumental in building. In, I believe that Secretary Bonoan will be instrumental in continuing the Build, Build, Build program commenced by former President uh, Duterte, na naging uh, dormit po ng butihing Secretary. Kita-kita naman po natin ang Build, Build, Build program ay patuloy na nagpapaginhawa at nagpapaganda sa buhay ng mga Pilipino. Natutuwa akong malaman na ipagpapatuloy mo talaga ito in order to sustain the country's economic growth. President Marcos Jr. in his persona promised to continue these projects in order to alleviate the lives of our citizens. By the first quarter of this year, 12 out of 119 Build, Build, Build projects have been completed. At napapakinabangan na po ito ng ating mga kababayan. Ipagpatuloy po natin ang nasimula ng nakarang administrasyon. And together, let us keep working for a better Philippines. Let us continue working to achieve the golden age of infrastructure in the Philippines and enhance mobility and connectivity. Certainly, Mr. Chair, uh, I cannot think of anyone better suited for the job. Secretary, Secretary Bonoan, uh, nakilala kita bilang isang tapat, masipag at uh, mapagkatiwala ang public servant. And you have my uh, full support. Malaki po ang tiwala ko sa inyong kakayahan at uh, kagustuhang tulungan ng ating uh, bansa. Salamat po and congratulations. Maraming salamat po, Your Honor. Thank you uh, for your manifestation of support, uh, Senator Bong. Senator Grispo. Senator Grispo. Senator uh, Grispo is recognized. Um, I'll yield the floor first to Congressman Romualdo. <laughs> 
Okay. Um, first of all, I fully support uh, your nomination, Secretary Bonoan. I've heard, uh, uh, what do you call this? Uh, uh, very good feedback regarding your work ethic and also how you've conducted yourself, your moral character. I just want to know for the record, as Secretary, what do you think are the big ticket projects that you would like to achieve during this administration? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Um, well, um, as has been, um, well, uh, it's actually a uh, instructions from the president to me, actually, that we need to, um, uh, to re uh, revisit uh, the uh, uh, national road system in the country to provide more efficient uh, transportation um, linking regions uh, to provide uh, unimpeded travel to the regions. Today, um, uh, Your Honor, um, a study prepared by the JICA sometime uh, several years back, uh, we would uh, it has been uh, indicated that the uh, the Philippines uh, would lose about 3.5 billion pesos a day if we do not address traffic congestion along our national highways. And this is going to be one of the priority areas that we have to look into, Mr. Um, uh, Your Honor, Madam uh, Senator. Um, we need to provide uh, and efficient and impeded interregional connections, actually. And uh, secondly, we also have to look into uh, uh, addressing resiliency in uh, protecting lives uh, of uh, our people from uh, the effect of uh, climate change disasters that have been prevailing now in the Philippines, Your Honor. Well, um, actually, yes. Uh those are general statements, and I agree with that, um, Mr. Secretary. I just, how about um, actual projects, like, for example, linking uh, Iloilo to Guimaras, uh, and then there's also that uh, proposal linking Batangas to uh, Mind Mindoro. Um, is there anything in the pipeline that, that would be of that magnitude? Certainly, Your Honor, I think... Uh... Um, this will be the inter-island connectivities that uh, we have proposed. Uh, the uh, Iloilo Guimaras, the Guimaras to Pulupandan in Negros is actually in, in the project preparation stage now. Uh, the, first, uh, the first phase is actually uh, under uh, the uh, official development assistance of the Korean um, Exim Bank. And then we also have a big... Um, Project that will link actually uh, uh, Cavite to uh, Maribeles, uh, Your Honor. And uh, this is already with the Asian Development Bank Official Development Assistance. This is already about 70% uh, 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 completed in detail engineering. We expect to start the, uh, the uh, construction of this project sometime in the middle of next year, most likely. And uh, this is about a 37-kilometer stretch of bridging Cavite to Mariveles. We also have other several uh, uh, bridge uh, programs that are online. We are now constructing, if I recall, the Pangil Bay Bridge. This is only then about uh, three and a half kilometers that will uh, shorten the travel distance from Lanao del Norte going to Misamis Occidental. And uh, we also have... Um, your Honor, um, in Metro Manila, we are uh, we are now um, in the process of uh, finalizing discussions with official development assistance uh, for the construction of additional six bridges that will cross Pasig River to provide better uh, um, efficiency in the transportation in the metropolis. Thank you yeah. very much. It's quite reassuring, and we're confident that you can implement those. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Thank you, Senator Po. Uh, I recognize Senator J.B. Hersito. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Secretary. Anyway, uh, we wish you all the luck because of uh, your track record. We know that uh, 
uh, the president chose a, uh, a very good person to he to head the agency, but just want to you know, of course, the challenge, you know, that DPWH is not exactly as doesn't have exactly have the be the best image. I know that you have a very challenge. You have a task, no, uh, tough challenge. But I know that uh, you can do it. But I'm hoping also that uh, based on what my colleagues has asked that uh, we need high impact projects really no to uh, stimulate economic growth um siguro pa ulit ulit na ako just want also uh, you to be aware also that sana po yung mga high impact projects talaga ituloy natin wag natin hayaan na pag ito yung pag pagatiyatian no yung nangyari dun yung i know that uh, i have raised this already with you yung pong uh, nangyari sa amin sa one papakita ko na po sa inyo para lang malaman niyo yung impact no that what i was uh, although this is parochial but i know that this will also concern all the other projects no that we, we should prioritize high impact projects so if you can show the pictures ito po is uh, in barangay san perfecto no because i was mayor of san juan for nine years congressman for three years so for 12 years i was uh, i uh I was involved in San Juan, and I know quite know the the terrain. Ito po yung problema doon, no? Ah, uh, sige po, just continue. And ito po yung after Odette, no? Uh, this is days after the the storm itself. Nandung pa rin po yung tubig, no? Kasi po yung this is a low lying barangay, yung San Perfecto and Batis, no? Kasi po yung yung water from the up uplands dito po mababa, and then should empty to the to the river. Kaya nga po, I, um, during my campaign as mayor of San Juan and uh, congressman, we were able to put up six pumping stations. So halos lahat po ng barangay dun sa amin, wala na humbaha. Ito na lang po yung naiwan. Noong 2018, when I was still in the Senate, nalagyan po natin ng pondo. Kaya lang, nagkamali lang po ng entry. No? Kaya, it was already in the net. Alam niyo na po yung istorya nito. Ay, uh, Kaya sana po ay matuloy po talaga ito because this is the only uh, thing na lang kasi po yung tubig sa palengke lahat it has to be um, emptied to the river. Kaya lang nalungkot ako no when I saw that uh, supposedly kung hindi natin yung kung yung attention napalitan siya no ng slow protection, rehabilitation of drainage system, construction of flood control. Do, these things we don't we know I know for a fact na hindi ito makakatanggal ng tubig no. So I just want to caution you, Secretary, na sana po um, alagang tignan na yung mga impact, that, the, the impact of these projects that will be uh, to the people, especially, no? uh, lalo na itong mga kunikita niya to talagang ilang linggo, no? kawawa naman na nangyayari pa rin to. So, ang sa akin lang ay um, mag-iingat po tayo, baka mamaya yung mga nasa ilalim natin, no? mamaya. Hindi niyo po alam because we committed already nag-usap tayo tayo tapos biglang na baltan pa I'm hope that this will not happen again Mr. Secretary I know that with your leadership with your integrity uh you can do this kaya I just raise this na sana hindi na ulit itong maulit no para this would also uh, apply to all, all other projects in other areas as well Mr. Secretary Thank you, Your Honor, and we can assure you, as we have, I have discussed this uh, issue with you, and uh, we will uh, certainly uh, take a second look uh, into this issue, Your Honor. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary, Mr. Chairman. I raised this, uh, not for me, parochial po ito, but I think it will also uh, be, uh, uh, will have an effect on other projects as well, to make sure that all projects, kumbaga money well spent, hindi naman tayo mahirap na bansa, hindi naman tayo mayaman na bansa, we have to make sure that all the peso that we spend for infra projects, yung talagang high impact, yung talagang makakatulong, not because for the sake of having projects, Mr. Secretary, I I hope that uh, ito po yung inyo pong magiging challenge and we will support you. We know uh, your integrity and character, Mr. Secretary. Yun na po, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you for your inputs, uh, Senator JV. Uh, at this point, uh, Chair recognizes uh, the presence of uh, our CA Chairman, uh, Senator Mig Subiri, and uh, my Kumari, Senator uh, Loren Ligarda. Uh, 
Congressman JJ uh, is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good afternoon, honorable members of the Commission of Appointments. Good afternoon, uh, Secretary Mani. Good afternoon, and you, uh, DPWH staff. Uh, I've known Secretary Mani since 1987 when my dad became the congressman, and he was responsible for the progress of the province and continuing province, uh, continuing uh, progress in the province of Kamigin. But before that, uh, I, uh, my manifestation of support. I just want to clarify. Mr. Secretary, Your Honor, kasi po, pag yung nilarason ng electric co-ops, yung mga poste, kayo yung may kasalanan, kayo lahat, eh, pinatawag na ng committee namin niya sa province, even in Congress, na dapat bago kayo maglagay ng poste, dapat mag-coordinate kayo ng DPWH, na ito ba yung Kasada Highway? Di ba may 10 meters o yun? Uh, pumapasok kayo doon, ilalagay nyo, Tapos, uh, especially in Kamigin right now, Mr. Secretary, Your Honor, um, nag-expand ako kami sa Kalsada, naging four lanes na because uh, there's progress in the province, the island province. The problem there is, nandun yung poste sa gitna. And every time I told them na tanggalin nyo yan, sabi na, probaho ng DPWH yan, go. So, paano maging DPWH yan? Hindi naman kayo nag-coordinate. So... I think that's a problem all over the country, especially for electric co-ops. Nirarason ho kayo. Kayo, nirarason ng DPWs. What is your take on that, Mr. Secretary, please? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, Your Honor. I, uh, when I, I have looked into this, and uh, no less than the President has called my attention about uh, this uh, uh, electric post still in the middle of the road, where uh, they have been widened. And um, to my um, knowledge, is actually that uh, um, there is an existing um, memorandum of agreement between the Department of Public Works and Highways and the National Electrification Administration, because it's the NIA that's supposed to give us actually the cost of uh, the uh, uh, transfer of the post. And so what the department is doing, um, Mr. Chairman, Your Honor, is that we build in, we built in into the project cost, actually the cost of transferring the post. And it should be the cooperatives that should be transferring themselves. The problem is, I understand, Your Honor, is that the cooperatives are waiting for the expansion of their lines before they transfer the poles. And this is what... The, this is the predicament that we are entering into, you know. It's, it is supposed to be the cooperatives that should be transferring their post. We have already we have already allocated the funds to them for the transfer of the polls. This is the situation, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chairman. So they will include, pag i-transfer nila, ayusin namin ang linya, yes. isasama pa nila sa cost sa DPWH. Uh, well, ba? unfortunately, Your Honor, it's actually the post that we have to relocate. It's not the lines. Because it's the responsibility for the lines. It's the post that we are trying to relocate. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, again, Mr. Chairman, I would like to... Yes, uh... Uh, Senator Sincha Villar first, uh, Mr. Chair. Senator Villar is uh, recognized. In connection to my uh, inquiry, Mr. Chair. Eh, as Secretary Bono and Meralco kami, yan ang malaking problem natin, yung widening ng road dito sa Greater Metro Manila. Na-widen na yung road, na iwan yung poste ng Meralco. And it defeats the purpose of the widening of the road. I remember I went to Tansa Cavite and it has widened, but uh, the post of Beralco and also in Dasmariñas and uh, all over Cavite, the post of Meralco are left out. So, walang saisa yung widening of the road, naging parking lot na ng mga tao kasi nakaganon yung poste ng Meralco. So, what is your take on that? Sino naman ang may responsibility doon? Uh, Your Honor, as I have mentioned, I, uh, what I understand from the practice now of the department is that the, uh, the cost of the relocation of the poles are actually in it's just included in the project cost. And, uh, and uh, we uh, make the arrangements actually that uh, we pay for the relocation of the post to uh, Widmer Alco. Uh, I think, uh, Your Honor, uh, there is another 
expense uh, on their part because of the transfer of the lines above. Uh, they were saying, I asked the mayor, why are the posts of Meralco still there after you have constructed? Sabi daw ng Meralco, tatapusin daw yung buong kalye hanggang dulo bago ilipat yung Meralco post. Eh kung tatapusin niya yung kalye hanggang dulo, kailan pa matatapos taon, yun? Taon. taon yun. So in the meantime, it's in the middle of the street. I hope you can uh, settle this with Miralco. It's all over the place. Oh. Yes, certainly, Your Honor. I think yes, uh, we will uh, put priority in, in the uh, in uh, discussing again, again with uh, the uh, uh, cooperatives in Miralco for that matter. Uh, so that uh, I I agree completely that uh, the uh, the effort to widen the roads become useless if you like uh, if the poles are not actually relocated um, soon enough, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Secretary, I hope you will do something about this. Yes, again. Your Honor. It defeats the purpose of Absolutely. our infrastructure project if the posts of Meralco are still there. Okay, thank, thank you very you, much. Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Senator Villar. Yes, Mr. Chair, I would just like to continue, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, again, uh, I fully support the confirmation of Secretary Manuel M. Bunuan. As I said, I know I know uh, Secretary Bunuan since 1987. Hindi ko nagbabago, okay, magbabago, sir. Keep up the good work. Since my father, if you go back to Kamigin, makikita nyo yung trabaho ng DPWH, I can assure you on that. Since 1987 up to the present, when I became congressman, then my son became congressman, my dad again, he died. And uh, ang trabaho na po ng DPWH doon, nandun, ang dami ng baha, lahat-lahat, pati tulay, hindi ko na tatanggal, ang ganda ho. Uh, thank you for that. And as I said, you started with uh, the progress in the province. Okay, so, Mr. Chairman, I fully support the confirmation in behalf of the province of Kamigin, Secretary Manuel M. Bunuan. This is a substantive experience and understanding of the challenges ahead, which includes climate change, promoting green engineering, sustainable infrastructure, and engineering innovations. We just hope that ample attention be given to island provinces in infrastructure development. Thank you. And... Uh, as I said, you have my support and my vote in the plenary later, uh, Secretary. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, Your Honor. Thank you, Kong JJ. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Is, uh, recognized. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, and magandang hapon po, Secretary. In relation to the concern raised by our majority leader earlier, uh, sa mga nanggugulong mga bidders, may I know from the good Secretary, uh, what plans do you have or programs do you wish to undertake uh, to uh, ensure uh, stricter eligibility of uh, potential bidders? Uh, certainly, Your Honor, I think there is a um, existing uh, pre-qualification system that is put in place in the Department of Public Works, and I, so I have looked into the system, and it is a rigid system by which actually it uh, uh, um, looks into the pre pre-qualification uh, requirements of contractors. And certainly, I think it's more important actually that uh, it has to be more strict in the implementation of the pre-qualification of contractors, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is one of the priority areas that we have to look into so that we can avoid this, uh, yung, uh, what has been brought about, and uh, yung mga sumasahod, and et cetera, Your Honor. This is not a good practice at all, and we will attend to it very seriously, Your Honor. Yes, because if you will uh, listen to the statement made by our majority leader, yung modus na to parang national eh, nanggugulo buong Pilipinas. So do you, uh, would, would you even consider uh, uh, national uh, accreditation on a national scope so that yung mga nanggugulo, hindi na mag, you know, they cannot, they will be prohibited from uh, 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 joining bids in, in all over the all over the country no kasi modus na ito nangyayari um, uh, Mr. Secretary uh, I think you you should look into this to ensure that only qualified bidders 
are able to join. Because sa, sa batas naman, hindi mo naman sila pwedeng iprohibit sa pagbili ng, ano eh, ng BDOX. Eh, di ba? Uh, so, 9184 is very uh, clear on that. The only time you can uh, you can disqualify them is outright technical no? uh, upon opening of bids pag, if they are not able to ano, or post-disqualify them should you find, uh, should you have findings post bidding So, uh, would you consider having a national accreditation to ensure that only qualified bidders are able to attend? Uh, I think that's a good idea, Your Honor, and I think we will. Uh, we will want uh, to uh, nationalize actually the pre-qualification pre of uh, contractors uh, so that uh, we can keep record of every contractor in a national level, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Thank you for considering that, Mr. Thank Secretary. You, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Kong Fred uh, Ferds. Uh, I recognize Kong uh, GP. After that, uh, Senator Loren, and the last will be the CA Chairman, Senator Miggs. Thank you, so, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is not a question, Mr. Chair, but a comment regarding our nominee. Fifty-seven years. That's how long our nominee has been in the field of public works. Na, nasabi tuloy yung age. Nais kong pasalamatan ng ating nominee sa kanyang mahaba at magaling na serbisyo. Sa ating bansa, makulad tayo na may mga public servants na tulad ng ating nominee na nagsasakripisyo para sa kapanan ng ating bansa. For that, Mr. Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Secretary, you got my support and I will vote for you in the plenary. Thank you. Okay, Your Honor. Thank you. Senator Ligada is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to express and manifest my full support to Secretary Bonoan, who has been in this field for many decades, out, uh, uh, maybe much more than some of our age, so he would know, really. But of course, during the time when he started and now, we have challenges like climate change. And so I just have one brief question so that it's clarified, uh, but it is not to make his life difficult or to show um, any uh, challenges in his confirmation because, as I said, we fully support his confirmation. But when the net was made, you are not yet secretary. When the gab was, I'll take this out. When the gab was passed by the house, there was no typhoon paeng yet. But you've seen how devastated several provinces and regions due to this super typhoon paeng. Thank you for visiting my home province of Antique right away. I truly appreciate that. Thank you for going all over the country uh, in areas that were affected by the super typhoon. But what do we do? for bridges, rehabilitation, reconstruction, retrofitting, and new bridges for those areas like ours in the Paliwan Bridge that was devastated and 51 meters of the 300 meters was uh, actually collapsed. Actually, I have the answer, but if there is no intervention from a lawmaker, what is the recourse of the executive if the typhoon happens after the net and the gab have been done. And it is not just one bridge, but many other bridges around the country that need retrofitting as well, and others which are also affected by uh, earthquakes. So, Mr. Secretary, what is the recourse of a secretary like you, uh, whose job is to ensure the safety everyone, especially in road connections, uh, bridges, and other infrastructure, critical infrastructure. Thank you, Secretary. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Your Honor, Mr. Chairman. I think this is a very uh, important issue that uh, the department has to address, uh, Your Honor, because of uh, the effect of climate change. I think uh, we have to revisit, uh, actually, uh, our design parameters, actually, at this point in time, because of these experiences that we uh, uh, now, uh, well, uh, because of uh, uh, when before we uh, our design parameters was only at a uh, return period of 20, 25 years. 
Peter in period of floods and things like this. Now we can see that I think uh, most of this flooding is, ex uh, is excessive floods. It's uh, we calculate it to almost about 50 to 100 years return period now here on or so we we'll have to revisit our design parameters at this point in time uh, so that we can adjust now to the uh, demands for this climate change uh, phenomenon your honor now um in cases of uh, these uh, damages, unfortunately, there are still going to be many damages actually because of the old uh, structures and the bridges. And uh, the only recourse that we have, uh, Your Honor, for the time being is to have the quick response fund immediately to restore mobility in these areas. And then uh, after, uh, after we have restored actually the mobility, then we have to uh, make sure that uh, we give priority already to the reconstruction of the bridges in the succeeding uh, uh, budget years, uh, Your Honor. The construction of the bridge, but if it is not in the net and the gap, it is up to us senators, sir, to amend the budget, to include a whole new bridge like what I'm doing. nag po tayo. I appreciate your visit, and the president visited, but if I, as lawmaker, will not amend the GAA of 2023, both your regional director and yourself said, walang pagkukunan kasi nasa amin na po ang budget. And so, I have to come to the rescue and amend the GAB to include that in toto, buo. I don't think any other senator can help me do that because they have many other concerns in many other provinces. So that's quite a heavy burden to bear, but I will do it as I promised you. And you heaved a big sigh of relief when I said, yes, I will amend with the support of the leadership of the Senate and my colleagues, because we cannot have a collapsed bridge in the middle of our province. And that would cost 300 million. It cannot be covered by the quick response fund. Uh, let's say even the bridge connecting Miagao and um, uh, Iloilo and Antique, it's just a temporary retrofit for light vehicles, but I don't think there is a nap and a gap provision for that bridge. I talked to Congarin yesterday, it's her district, and the district engineer, I, I'm, uh, I'm told, uh, wala rin, kasi hindi naman nila lagay, hindi naman nila uh, problema yon or kasalanan kasi nangyari yung paing just a few weeks ago. So, paano po, alam natin sa pagbabago ng klima, nangyayari na ang mga disasters na to, sa end of the year, gawa na po ang NEP, napasa na po yung GAB. So, inaayos po ng Senado, kailangan lahat po to address. Otherwise, it will be 12 months of waiting if you put it in the 2024 NEP, di ba po? So, um, poor people cannot wait. Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Yes. So, uh, ano po ang dapat gawin? Lakihan po ang QRF ninyo? Magkano ba yun? Or, kailangan aware kami sa lahat ng pagpasa ng GAB, alam namin sa 81 provinces, anong nangangailangan, hindi lamang ng retrofitting or QRF na maliliit, kundi yung talagang nag-collapse. Pondohan. Because if we do not do that in the Senate, the country will have, the people will have to wait for 12 months until the, 20, the next budget year. Am I correct, Secretary? Yeah, that's correct, Your Honor, and uh, we appreciate actually the effort of the good uh, Senator actually in uh, providing the immediate uh, need of uh, the, the reconstruction of Baliwan Bridge. Actually, uh, this is probably, Your Honor, a policy that we have to look into and uh, possibly will uh, put more um, contingencies uh, in the uh, in uh, the preparation of our national expenditure program from the start. But uh, this has to be uh, uh, most likely discussed with, uh, with uh, Congress and, uh, of course, uh, the, um, the, uh, for both houses, Appropriations Committee and Committee on Finance, actually, so that we can, we can have a, we can have a uh, possibly a uh, contingent CV budget for this type of requirements, Your Honor. Kano po ang inyong Quick Response Fund for GAA 2023? Um, the Quick Response Fund, uh, Your Honor, is actually uh, uh, managed by the, the Department of Budget and Management, and uh, they are released uh, 
uh, in, needed. In, as needed uh, for this uh, for paying your honor we were able to to get a quick response fund i think of about 1 billion pesos your honor only 1 billion for the whole country imagine yes. uh, this is under our end dream law of 2010 and under the dpwh budget the qrf is 1 billion for any damages caused by earthquake storms whatever <laughs> obviously that's not no, enough that's not because enough. if you will look at it in my province alone it's 300 I mean, yeah. 81 provinces and it's not the only that's true, typhoon that's true. so but we know of course that the qrf can be replenished from the end dream fund but even the total end dream fund is only what 10 or 15 b um so i think this is something uh, Mr. Chair, that we must look into. Uh, I don't have the exact solution. At least I can solve that for my province, but for other provinces, because it's not the only bridge that collapsed. The yeah, bridge sure, of Iloilo yeah. Ilo so needs, because that's also what connects your province to mine, yes, and sure. many others within provinces and connecting uh, provinces and islands. Yes, Your Honor. Um, can you give us, not today, because you will be confirmed today, uh, within the week, all bridges for urgent connection. Palapaliwan. Kami talagang nahati at bumagsak. Yes. Yung medyo light, um, light vehicles na pwede, yeah. baka pwede pa yun, pero yung talagang disconnected. Maybe there are others yeah. who may not have an elected senator there who can speak out for them who also need help. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, propose to us what needs to be done. Yes. Hindi po pwedeng puro band-aid solution po tayo, but we really appreciate uh, your going around right after Typhoon Paeng hit us. So thank you for that, but it's a question mark which is lodged in Congress. What do we do when at the last quarter of the year, that's when the strongest storms come and the budget, so the net and the gab are done? So this, how much can the Senate realign to help these provinces? Yun po. Yung pala isipan, I will not give the answer. I will leave it to the good secretary perhaps to tell uh, Congress or the Senate what a special provision perhaps would address that issue. But I'm happy to help you with that one bridge problem of Paliwan with the permission and support of our chair of finance and the Senate president. We will put that budget for the whole bridge. Thank you, Your Honor. Honor. Thank you very That's much. That's one bridge off your back. Thank you, Secretary. Mr. Chairman, follow up uh, uh, manifestation and uh, with regards to Senator Ligada. That, that was just, not a manifestation. Uh, no, it's not manifestation, Mr. Chair. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. it's just, uh, I just want to continue. Um, not only a bandit solution for especially on bridges, Mr. Chair. Just one minute, Mr. Okay. Chair. Uh, Mr. Secretary. I noticed, uh, kaya ako nagkukulaps yung mga tulay. I'm sure sigurado naman yung DPWH na talagang matiba yan and everything. But because of this climate change, meron lang akong suggestion kasi tapos na yung budget for 2023. Pwede also ay 2024. Along the national highway, maglagay ho tayo ng weighing scale for these trucks. Kasi I talked to PPA, kasi oh, yung mga trucks natin, 5 tanner lang yung tulay, 20 tons. Ang dumadaan o 50 tons. Araw-araw dinadaanan yan. Pag dumaan yung bagyo, bagsak talaga. Can you put that in the budget ba for the national? Kasi yun ang problema eh. Maski ayos na ng ayos ng tulay every year, bagsak ng bagsak, wala namang weighing scale. Kasi uh, kausap ko namin si uh, me in behalf sa, 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 sa Kamigin, by, by next year, lalagyan nata ng PPA doon sa Balingwan. Kasi yung mga trucks papasok sa Kamigin, sasakay ng Roro, sumakayo yung, especially yung uh, soft drinks so nagdadala doon. Naku, pag pumasok sa barko, talagang ikaw nandun, matatakot ka kasi parang lumubog eh. Ooh, ganun. E, so, di ba? Buti na lang. Buti na lang, Mr. Chairman, sasabihin nila, alam mo, Gob, buti na lang, malapit na lunod. Buti na lang, may word na malapit. Kung wala, lunod. Your one minute has expired. Uh, okay. Mr. Chairman, it's the, in basketball, there's extension. Another <laughs> two minutes. So, can, it's... Sorry, Mr. Chair. And then, it's important to say, because 
sira lang tayo ng sira ng tulay, ayos-ayos, every year. Kasi ang dumadaan, 20 tons. Eh, 10 tons na yung tulay. Tapos, sisisihin yung DPWS. Kurap yung DPWS. At kurap dun. And dumadaan, 50 tons every day. My God. Hindi lang nakikita yun eh. Ang binabanatan, ang department lang, o congressman, o senator. Eh, ganun eh. Hindi tinitingnan, ikulang tayo. Because in other countries, Mr. Chair, meron akong JICA na project. Yeah. Talagang dati, may sinusuhulan ng JICA. Bandayan mo yun na, 5 tons. Eh, Mahalay ba namin, 5 tons yun. See? Sir, I think we... it can help, Mr. Yes. Secretary. Uh, you're on. Sir, man, you're on. You're on next year's budget, 2024, uh, 2024 po. Now, you can put that in the budget. Na meron talaga, along the national highway, ng mga tulay. Kasi... Oh, Oo, may alert system. Ang dumadan, 50 tons, tapos 20 tons lang yung tulay. Eh, ta kayo ang department ang binabanatan, yung congressman, governor, ano bang? You know. The the Mr. Chairman. Thank, Thank, Thank you, Your, your Honor. Your Your Honor. Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. 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 Thank in favor of you, I was a congressman when you headed the department as uh, as the uh, acting secretary. You were well loved by your people. You were well highly recommended at the time. And I can very trivial question, secretary, because I forgot to ask this during the budget hearing. Was um, there are highways, national highways? Uh, these are national, large national highways. There may mga stoplight dun sa amin sa Mindanao. Wala naman, wala naman, hindi naman major thoroughfare ang lumulusot. Tricycle lang dumada. So, galing sa airport, papunta ka ng Cagayan de Oro, ang daming stoplight. So, lahat ng kotse, pigil. National highway yun. Tapos, wala naman through through street. It's just a small street na tricycle. Minsan, walang dumadaan. Minsan, talaga, aso lang dumadaan. So, ayun ko, does the DPWH agree to these things? Can't you come out with a circular stating that if it's not a major thoroughfare that goes through the national highway, maybe it's uh, not a good idea to put st uh, stoplights kasi it's just causing traffic. I know local governments gusto nilang gawin niya kasi sabihin nila malaki na yung city namin dahil may stoplight na kami. Eh, hindi naman kailangan yung stoplight dun sa city na kasi wala naman dumadaan dyan. What do you say, sir? Can you come up with a study on that? Yeah, certainly, Your Honor. Yes, I think, uh, well, uh, uh, for now po kasi, I think uh, the man traffic management is... Uh, is given to the local government uh, units actually for uh, managing traffic, Your Honor. But certainly, I think we can coordinate with the local government units, particularly in high speed, high speed, high speed highways. Yes, Your Six and eight lane highways. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, I agree completely, Your Honor. That uh, sometimes uh, it's even a cause for accident. Arbitrary yeah. rin yung paglagay ng mga traffic lights kung minsan. So we can guide them, Your Honor, in um, this uh, this uh, issue on putting traffic signalizations, particularly on high speed roads, Your Honor. Okay, lang kasi kung secondary national highways. Pero kung primary na high-speed roads galing to the airport to the city, may stoplight din naman sa da dadaan sa kabila. Isang lane lang pala, when I tricycle isa, dalawa, lulusot dyan. So I'm just, uh, I, I, every time I pass through there, I just scratch my head and say, ano bang say ng DPWH dito? Anyway, Mr. Chairman, it's almost uh, 2 o'clock and we have sessions at 3. I don't think uh, we have any objections to this gentleman here who served the DPWH with uh, flying callers for many, many years. Uh, as a matter of fact, he's a uh, ROTC, Return of the Comeback. Uh, he's, he's comebacking DPWH, uh, well loved by staff, well loved by the Secretariat of the DPWH. I move, Mr. Chairman, that, uh, of course, on the part of the Senate, and I know the part of the House uh, and will also do the same with the Majority Leader. On the part of the Senate, we interpose no objection, and let's take him to the plenary and confirm him once and for all. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair. So if there are no more questions and comments, uh, Chair, recognize the uh, Majority Leader. Mr. Chair, the Senate President uh, has 1,000% support. Sir Congressman Johnny, 1,000, 2,000 na. Uh, you only need 100%, uh, Secretary Bonoan. So Mr. Chair, I move to recommend to the plenary for the Commission to confirm the ad interim appointment of Secretary Manuel M. Bonoan as Secretary, Department of Public Works and Highways. So, Mr. Chair. Take on. Okay. Okay.
There is a motion to recommend Second. to the plenary on the commission to confirm. Thank you, Your Honours. Thank you very much, Your Honours. Uh, order lang, di pa tayo nag -adjourn. Yeah, we have uh, just a few things to tackle, our colleagues. Your excuse, where you can excuse the good secretary. So, thank you, uh, Secretary. Before we... Ah, no, no, we have a brief uh, executive session. We have to dispose. The chairman hindi pa nag-approve the motion ng majority leader. We have to dispose the motion. There is a motion to recommend to the plenary for the commission to confirm the ad interim appointment of Secretary Manuel M. Bonoan, Secretary of Department of Public Works and Highways. The chair hears no objection. The motion is approved. Congratulations, Mr. Secretary. Mr. Chair, I just want to move that to have a short caucus uh, prior to proceeding to the plenary. Mr. Chair, I so move. Wala pang motion to adjourn. Ah, okay. <laughs> Maybe we can withhold the motion to adjourn the committee so that we can all meet. See you there. Proceed to the committee na po kayo. We'll just have a... Sa plenary na po sila. Proceed to the plenary. I oh, know it's not necessary. Uh, it's okay. Uh, we just want the attention of Senator Villar and those who are here. Um, gentlemen, ladies, with, the due, with the due respect to our chairperson, we're, there's a request from the House contingent. If we can just have a maximum of one or pinakamarami ng two a day. Kasi nga, hindi tayo natatapos ng maaga. So... Uh, a day. A week. A day. So you want one a day? What is the pleasure of the body? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, on behalf of the House, may we request kung pwedeng one a day lang? Kasi that's what, that's the practice even uh, before. Uh, iba, dati nga once a week lang. One nominee a week. Kaya we can tackle one per day or two nominees a week. For the simple fact that uh, medyo we cannot anymore attend some of our sessions and all in the House, and I'm sure you would uh, agree. And considering today we only had two nominees, and we're already finishing by 2. And we also don't want to affect the, your schedule of 3 p.m., uh, Mr. Chair. So for consideration of our colleagues in the Senate. Hey, um, my only problem is the lobbying of our colleagues and the lobbying of the secretaries. Kasi mangyayari dyan, may, mag, may, may bypass. Kasi as of now, with the schedule of 2 on Tuesday, 2 on Wednesday, matatapos natin yan by, the night, by December 13th, 14th. 14 yata is the last day. 14. But if we're going to do it one a day, may mababypass dyan. Now, I'm going to ask the majority leader to decide on my behalf na lang or in a group chat, sino bang uunahin natin? Kasi let's start maybe next week. Yung bukas tuloy na natin. Okay, yeah, we all agree. We all agree. We all agree. We agree to that. Because like yesterday, linapitan ako ni Tito Cynthia about Toots Ople. Linapitan ako ng iba about sa other secretaries. May, ma may maiiwan talaga dyan. So, we're going to have to decide as a body who do we take up once every Tuesday and once every Wednesday. Maybe we'll make an exception. If it's all right to the body, if it's defense of JJ or DFA, which is ambassadors, hindi natin isabayan ng isang secretary. Yes. Uh, so, yes. Wala na okay. question yung mga yun. We agree with you. Okay. But, um,
afternoon appointments on the first regular session of the 19th Congress is hereby called to order. On behalf of Senator Francis Escudero, who signed today, may I call on Senator Grace Pope to lead us in the lead the chamber in prayer. Again, disclaimer, this is the prayer of Senator Chis Escudero for all of us. Almighty God, we thank you for the enlightened and fruitful discussions earlier today that led us all here now at the plenary as we conclude the meticulous and arduous process of ensuring that the government bureaucracy will only have the right people. We are aware that as public servants, you have blessed us with the rare opportunity of making us instruments for the fulfillment of your plans for our country and the Filipino people. In the Gospel of Matthew chapter 24, verse 40, our Lord Jesus said, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. May we all take this verse to heart as we serve your people. We are all our brother's keepers, more so if we put in positions of authority to look after the marginalized and the ordinary. Panginoon, ang aming bansa ay humaharap sa napakaraming pagsubok. Hindi magiging madali para sa lahat ang mga susunod na buwan at mga taon. Hinihiling namin ang iyong pagkalinga at biyaya. Bigyan ninyo kami ng lakas upang malampasan ang mga hamon at pagsubok ng panahon bilang isang bansa na buo ang pananalig sa inyo. We especially pray that the Holy Spirit will guide our government officials and public servants so that in everything we do, we are fulfilling your will. With you as our strength and guide, may we all make a difference to the lives of all the 115 million Filipinos. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please remain standing for the singing of the Philippine National Anthem. Secretary, please call the roll. The Honorable Members of the Commission on Appointments, Maria Lourdes Nancy S. Binay, Virginelle G. Biron, Alan Peter Compañero S. Cayetano, Joseph Victor G. Ejercito, Francis G. G. Escudero, Jingoy Ejercito Estrada, Albert S. Garcia, Greg G. Gasataya, Christopher Bong Go, Ramon N. Guico Jr., Risa Ontiveros, Lauren Legarda, Oscar Oka G. Malapitan, Rodante D. Marcoleta, Amy R. Marcos, Lani Mercado Revilla, Jose Gay G. Padernos, Johnny T. Pimentel, Grace Poe, Jordin Jesus M. Romualdo, Manuel T. Sagarbaria, Francis Tol N. Tolentino, Luis Raymond L. Ray F. Villaferti Jr., Cynthia A. Villar. The chairperson is present. With 20 members present in person and no one online, we have 20 members present. The chair declares present of a quorum. The joint leader. Mr. Chair, I move to dispense with the reading of the journals of the plenary sessions held on September 27 and 28, 2022, and consider the same as approved. There being no objection to the motion, Majority Floor Leader, the motion is approved. 
Mr. Chair, may we now proceed to consider the recommendation of the Committee on Public Works and Highways on the ad interim appointment of Mr. Manuel Manligas Bonoan as Secretary, Department of Public Works and Highways. I so move, Mr. Chair. There being no objection to the motion of the Majority Floor Leader, motion is approved. Mr. Chair, I move that the Chairperson of the Committee on Public Works and Highways, Representative Rodante D. Marcoleta, be recognized. The distinguished gentleman from our party list is recognized, Congressman Rodante Marcoleta. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon to everyone. With a special mention to Senator Jingo Estrada. <laughs> it is said that the road to success is always under construction. <laughs> this passage puts into perspective the pivotal role that the Department of Public Works and Highways plays in paving the road for our country's growth and development to reach new heights. But this must start from the exigency of appointing a capable and experienced leader at its helm. Honorable Chairman and distinguished members of the Commission on Appointments, it is my honor to sponsor the confirmation of the ad interim appointment of Manuel Manligas Bonoan as Secretary of the Department of Public Works and Highways. Known as money to his family, friends, and colleagues, this gentleman, born in Solsona, Ilocos Norte, is a true-blooded public servant with four decades in government service, particularly in this department in which he served with utmost dedication and commitment. He started his career in 1966 as a civil engineering aide in the Bureau of Public Highways, in the then Department of Public Works, Transportation and Communication, eventually becoming a registered civil engineer on January 1968 after obtaining his Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering at the Mapua Institute of Technology in 1967. He furthered his studies with a graduate diploma in highway engineering at the University of New South Wales, Sydney, Australia, in 1976. He rose from the ranks to handle various significant positions in the Department of Public Works and Highways until he retired as Senior Undersecretary in June 2010 after serving the DPWH for 44 years. 44 years. I can safely say without fear of contradiction, Mr. Chair, that Secretary Mani is the only homegrown among the present crop of cabinet members. He has personally experienced the ups and downs of the country's infrastructure industry, working in various capacities in successful completion of several high impact projects. He is acknowledged for his technical preparedness and expertise in public works and is described as the main anchor for the successful implementation of public works projects, particularly foreign assisted projects, including JICA, UNDP, and the Asian Development Bank. Characterized as an amiable, mild-mannered, principled, and highly accomplished individual, he is well regarded for his modest and unassuming person, persona, and known for his enormously proud, for being enormously proud of his Ilocano heritage and roots. He joined the private sector in 2011 after his retirement from government service as consultant advisor to the infrastructure, sec infrastructure sector of the San Miguel Corporation and thereafter as the conglomerate's president and CEO for Skyway Operations and Maintenance Corporations. He had to make a great sac sacrifice by giving up his, his, his lucrative job in the private sector with many sources expressing the belief that he accepted the post to be able to leave a lasting legacy for the country by helping the president succeed in his public works agenda when he accepted the appointment to be the 40th secretary of the Department of Public Works and Highways for, his, for which he was reported to be the first and the only choice of the president. 
His appointment as DPW and Secretary was warmly welcomed by the employees and officers of the department in view of his long-established reputation for competence, fitness, and integrity. He is well respected in the department for being an insider who rose from the ranks and acquired vast experience, mastering the nuances in the execution of public work projects. The TPWA Central Office Employees Union, representing more than or more or less 4,000 plantilla employees of the DPWA Central Office, issued Resolution Number 2022-13, dated September 12, 2022 manifesting their full support, full and unequivocal support to his confirmation as DPW Secretary, citing his competence, hard work and experience, and for being a self-made man and an effective and efficient public servant. He is admired by his staff for possessing a photographic memory, and for his meticulous nature as well as attention to details. Finding time to read all documents and is known for being particularly strict even on the observance of the rules of English grammar. And is also noted for consistently exuding a pleasant demeanor not known to lose his school or his called erring employees. He is likewise well regarded for his fairness in both his professional and personal dealings with others. In his appointment to the top post of the DPWAs, he vowed to look closely into possible corrupt practices within the department, as well as continue the projects under the Build, Build, Build program of the previous administration to sustain the country's economic growth. In this time of uncertainty brought about by the pandemic, we need a steady hand at the helm of this department, which is a catalyst in sustaining the growth and development potentials of the administration of President Ferdinand R. Marcos, Jr. I am confident, Mr. Chair, that Secretary Manny's, that with uh, Secretary Manny's experience in public works and his technical expertise honed over time, the department is and will be in good hands. It is thus my privilege to recommend to this honorable body give its consent to the confirmation of the ad interim appointment of Manuel Manligas Bonoan as Secretary of the Department of Public Works and Highways. I so move, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, Majority Leader. to second the nomination of Secretary Bonoan, may we now recognize Congressman Ramon Gico. The distinguished Vice Chair of the Commission on Appointments, Congressman Ramon Guico is recognized. Uh, Mr. Chairman and fellow members of this commission, our appointee is a dedicated engineer and a very qualified to lead the Department of Public Works and Highways. His humble beginning from an engineering aide to senior undersecretary of TPWH and executive position in the private sector prove his dedication to his chosen profession and commitment to share his knowledge and expertise with the Filipino nation. Under his keen watch, I anticipate his implementation of the baseline balance and managed parametric formula, which will allocate an equitable budget to all legislative districts of our country and be true to his holistic goal of the government and no one will be left behind. With his devotedness, Mr. Chair and their colleagues, it is with great pride and I second the motion to confirm the ad interim appointment of my fellow public servant from Region 1, Engineer Manuel Manligas Bonuan, as Secretary of the Department of Public Works and Highways. Thank you. Mr. Chair, may we now recognize Senator Jingoy Estrada. The gentleman from San Juan, Senator Jingoy Estrada, is recognized. 
Thank you, Mr. President. This is to make of record my uh, full support to the confirmation of the ad interim appointment of Mr. Manuel Bonoan, the Secretary of the Department of Public Works and Highways. Our nominee is a civil engineer by profession who began his long and remarkable career in public service as a civil engineer aide in 1966 in the Bureau of Public Highways, Department of Public Works and Transportation and Communication, learned the ropes and steadily climbed up the DPWH ladder to become a junior civil engineer, supervising civil engineer, project manager, undersecretary, officer in charge, and finally, as its senior undersecretary until his, until his retirement in 2010. Just as an impressive skyscraper, he built himself from the ground, ground up and rose to be at its peak, looked up to and well respected not only because of his top tier position, but more so for his dedication, professionalism, and humility. Secretary Manny's inviolable career and success story are indeed inspiration for all the rank and file employees, ex exemplifying that hard work, commitment to excellence, and integrity will earn you the respect and trust of your colleagues, just like his appointment was well received by the department's employees and officers. He was the man behind the successful implementation of numerous big ticket public works, yet he is well regarded for being mild mannered and modest. Malaki po ang nakaatang sa mga balikat ni Secretary Bonoan. Reinforcing the backbone of the nation's economic recovery from the pandemic, engineering unity and interconnectedness of the archipelago, and facilitating the country's readiness and competitiveness for the future. With his proven track record and unquestionable expertise, I reiterate my full support to the confirmation of the ad interim appointment of our dear friend from Ilocos Norte, Mr. Manuel Bonoan, as DPWH Secretary. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, my dear colleague, Majority Leader. Mr. Chair, may we now recognize Congresswoman Lani Mercado Rivilla. Distinguished ladies, uh, Congresswoman of uh, the city of Bacoor, my comadre, uh, Congresswoman Lani Mercado is recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Ch Mr. President. Distinguished colleagues of this commission, I stand in support of the confirmation by this August body of the ad interim appointment of Secretary Manuel Manny Manligas Bonoan as the 40th Secretary of the Department of Public Works and Highways. It must be stressed that our good secretary spent 44 years of his life to the service of the Filipino people in DPWH, a testament to his devotion and love for his profession and our nation. In the words of President Ferdinand Romualdez Marcos Jr., and I quote, I nominate Manny Bonoan for the Department of Public Works and Highways. He has spent almost his entire professional life in the DPWH. I know him very well. I know he will do a good job, end quote. As the Marcos administration declares its strong intention to continue the Build Build program through the Build Better More, allow me to reiterate that my beloved Bacoreños and Kababayans in Cavite long for and await the completion of the Bacoor Diversion Road, the LRT Line 1 extension, the various flood control projects, the bridge that would connect Cavite province to the province of Bataan, and the jobs that will be generated through all of these projects as they are implemented. The Build Better More program aims to complete the infrastructure requirements of our full-scale goal of not only economic recovery and resiliency, but towards becoming a newly developed country. Secretary Manny, you have my confidence as you fulfill your promise to work out and implement flood control programs, integrated and seamless road network systems, for livable, sustainable, and resilient communities. Sama-sama tulong-tulong para sa ating sabay-sabay na pagbangon as we build better more and recover from this protracted pandemic. Let the golden age of infrastructure continue towards the end uh, goal of becoming a developed Philippines. God bless all the works of your hands, Secretary, and congratulations. Mr. Chair, may we now recognize Senator Aimee Marcos? Our distinguished colleague from the uh, 
Province of Ilocos Norte, Senator Aimee Marcos. Apo Aimee is recognized. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Mr. President, Majority Leader. Ilocos Norte has a vaunted tradition of impossible engineering, of mad architecture, of incredible infrastructure projects that will never be done. Ilocanos dare to build what others only dream. A proud product of that legacy, a keeper of that infrastructure flame, is therefore our nominee, Secretary Manuel Manligas Bonoan. Pasingkedan tikinatan ok ti Ilocandia, pasingkedan tikinatan ok ni Ilocano. Agbiag ni Apo, Secretary Manuel Bonoan. Just Agnina. Agureka. Um, uh, <laughs> I, I wish that, my wife was here to translate that for me. <laughs> I wanted to know, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, may we now recognize uh, Congressman Johnny Pimentel. A distinguished colleague that from I, the uh, province of Surigao del Sur, San, uh, Congressman Johnny Pimentel. That I say, Mapo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Who by, roots, who by roots I buy, uh, is also from Ilocos, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. The Pimentels uh, are from Ilocos. Actually, the, my ancestors come from uh, Ilocos North. Norte. Po. That's correct. So I consider myself Iloco, Ilocano also for the name. <laughs> anyway, Mr. Please Chair, proceed. Please proceed. moving forward, the Department of Public Works and Highways is the government's arms vested with the lofty mandate of carrying out the state's construction and engineering undertakings. It is the executive office task to continuously develop its technology to ensure the safety of all infrastructure facilities and secure all public works and highways with the highest efficiency. That our biggest and tallest of buildings, bridges and edifices stand firm because of the foundation laid by the DWH. The same department tasked to do so must also have its core a strong foundation. The personification of such strong foundation could be found in the person of Secretary Manuel Bonoan, a public servant dedicated and committed to the vision of the department. In his sleeves, he holds a total 44 years in government service. Secretary Mani is one who is all too familiar with the work of his office where he rose to the ranks. His stint covers a full government service tour starting as a civil engineering aide in 1966 to department senior undersecretary upon his retirement in 2010. In the scholarly realm, Secretary Mani is no stranger to publishing his learned treatises in ensuring that not only buildings are enriched, but also an institutional memory of experience that can be passed on to the following generation of Filipinos to come. In 1993, he published Public Works Research and Development in the Philippines, Development of an Arterial Road System in the Philippines, in Road Safety in the Philippines. Later in 1994, he also published Damage of Highways and Effects of Passengers, Goods Flow in Disaster Emergency, and Contemporary Problems and Policy Making Trends in Transportation Infrastructure Improvement in Developing Countries. All of this invaluable contribution to the intergenerational marketplace of knowledge. Since his retirement from government in 2010, Secretary Bonoan has enjoyed the lucrative life in the private sector. However, heeding the clarion call by President Bongbong Marcos to master in the name of public service, Secretary Mani rises anew as the DPWH's 40th Secretary, a true and meaningful demonstration of love to the Filipino people. Therefore, Mr. Chair, I second the motion for the confirmation of the interim appointment of Secretary Manuel Bonoan as Secretary of the DPWH. So moved, Mr. Chair. 
Thank you, Congressman Pimentel. Majority. Mr. Chair, may we now recognize Congressman Oka Malapitan? Our distinguished colleague from the city of Caloocan, Congressman Malapitan, is recognized. After. Maraming salamat, Mr. Chair, sa mga minamahal natin kasapi ng komisyong ito. Ang pangalang Manuel Manligas Bunoan ay nagsilbing institusyon sa kagawaran ng DPWH, isang produkto ng Mapua Institute of Technology na nagtapos ng kursong engineering. Agad na sumabak si Secretary Manny sa kagawaran ng dating Department of Public Works and Highway noong administrasyon ni dating Pangulong Ferdinand Marcos Sr. At matapos nito, ay mabilis na umangat sa kanyang posisyon dating Minister of Public Highway hanggang makamit niya ang posisyon ng Chief Civil Engineer. Si Secretary Manny ay nagsilbi ding Assistant Secretary ng DPWH noong 1987 hanggat malagay siya bilang Undersecretary ng kagawarang ito. At minsan ay naupo din bilang officer in charge ng DPWH noong 2007. Sa madaling salita, malawak ang karanasan sa paggawa ng pagpanatili ng mga daan. Itong karanasan din ni Secretary Manny ang naging dahilan ng kanyang makamit ng ang Most Outstanding Civil Engineer Award noong 2006. Pati na din ng Outstanding Alumnus Award ng Government Service kung kaya't hindi na dapat pagtakhan kung bakit si Secretary Manny ang naatasan ni Pangulong Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos bilang kalihim ng DPWH. At sa mga rason na it, ding ito, taus-puso kong sinisigundahan ang pagkumpirma kay Secretary Manny bilang kalihim ng DPWH. Maraming salamat, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, may we now recognize Congressman uh, G.P. Padiernos? Congressman uh, Padiernos is recognized. Mr. Chairman, my distinguished colleagues in the Commission on Appointments, good afternoon. I am privileged to stand here today to manifest my strong support for the confirmation by this Honorable Commission of the Ad Interim Appointment of the Honorable Manuel Manligas Bonoan as Secretary of the Department of Public Works and Highways. Secretary Bonoan is no stranger to DPWH, having retired from the department as senior under secretary in 2010 after serving DPWH for 44 years. He practically started his career in the department and slowly worked by his way up to the top. He rose from the ranks of the department, from being a civil engineering aide all the way up to being a senior undersecretary. His excellent work has not gone unnoticed. He has received numer numerous awards from notable Institutions such as most, most Outstanding Civil Engineer Award from the Professional Regulation Commission in 2006. Outstanding Alumnus Award in Government Service from the Mapua Institute of Technology, CENC Alumni Association in 2003. Most Outstanding Millennium consultant from the Society of the Philippine Accredited Consultants Incorporated, SPAC, in 2000. He has also been recognized by his peers and has been elected to high positions in the various organizations he has joined. Past President, Philippine Institute of Civil Engineers, PICE, Past President, Society of Philippine Accredited Consultant Incorporated, SPAC. And Past President, Road Engineering Association of the Philippines, REAP. After retiring from the department in 2010, Secretary Bonoan's talent and expertise was harnessed by the private sector 
when he was invited to become a consultant advisor of the infrastructure sector of the San Miguel Corporation, and therefore the president and chief operating officer of Skyway Operations and Maintenance Corporation, SOMCO. Secretary Bunoan has been characterized by various sources as an amiable, mild manner, principled, and highly accomplished individual. He is noted for being a devout Roman Catholic and a responsible family man to his spouse and children. He is well regarded for his modest and unassuming persona and known for being enormously proud of his Ilocano heritage and roots. Secretary Bunuan had to make a great sacrifice by giving up his lucrative job in the private sector and accepting the post offered by, to him by the president so that he will be able to leave a lasting legacy for the country by helping the president succeed in his public works agenda. It is, therefore, but fitting that we allow this good man to cap his career at the helm of the department he has served so long and so well. I, therefore, join the rest of my colleagues in the commission and appointments in expressing my full support for the confirmation of the ad interim appointment of the Honorable Manuel Manligas Bonuan as the Secretary of the Department of Public Works and Highway. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Paul, uh, Mr. Leader. Mr. Chair, uh, Senator J.V. Ejercito has expressed that his uh, support uh, be put in record uh, instead of him uh, uh, delivering this speech. It. Yes, we take and, note of that. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Chair, uh, on the part of the majority, we support the confirmation, the ad interim appointment of Mr. Manuel Manigas Bonoan as Secretary, Department of Public Works and Highways. I Mr. Chair, on the part of the minority, we fully support the confirmation of the ad interim appointment of Secretary Manuel Bonoan to the DPWH. So, so there being no objection, and there is a motion, I would just like to say that Secretary Bonoan is fit for the job. He is well loved and well liked by his peers. He comes in as a, a secretary or a public servant who does not need the learning curve because he grew up from the ranks of the DPWH. The hands of the DPWH are safe with this gentleman and I'm proud to move to act on the motion. <laughs> there being no objection, the ad interim appointment of Secretary Manuel Manligas Bonoan is hereby confirmed and approved. With the permission of the majority leader, we can uh, we can already adjourn the committee, but we'll not adjourn the session so okay. we can discuss other matters. Mr. Chair, we would like to congratulate our members. We finished on time before the 3 o'clock session <laughs> of the Senate. I think it's a... Uh... Because we only had one. Yeah. If we had two, I think we would go over time again. Anyway, Mr. Chair, there being no other matters to discuss, I move to adjourn. But before we move to adjourn, just other matters. We discussed earlier, gentlemen, ladies, our scheduling. Uh, I know we're pressed for time and that uh, uh, we only have a few session weeks, not to mention November 30 or Wednesday is a holiday. So wala po tayong trabaho sa November 30. May I just ask our colleagues if we can just, uh, because there's an appeal from our colleagues that we keep it to two, actually one dapat, but uh, okay na po yung two secretaries or two chairmanships a day ang itatackle. So that will include the DFA and uh, the DND. So we will ask the secretary of the CA to come up with a new schedule, kasi mayroon dun tatlo eh. So request nila dalawa lang maximum, and that we start at 9 a.m. sharp. Is that agreeable with everyone, Majority Leader? Yes, except for tomorrow. Except yeah, for tomorrow. We concur, Mr. Thank you. Chairman. So except for tomorrow, we have three, uh, uh, two secretaries and one uh, head of the Commission of Appointments to tackle. With that, there being no other matters, 
and no objection to the motion to adjourn. The commission appointment is hereby adjourned. Maraming salamat. Mr. Chair, we request a photo.